Oh, yeah. So can I. Yeah. That's well, awkward sort of a thing, this, isn't it? <laughs> One of the advantages of being married, you know, having someone to do you up. There, done. All right, thank you. Now, what would you like? I mean, for your breakfast. Well, how about forgetting breakfast and giving another bit of practice at uh, doing up your blouse? <laughs> You don't give a girl a chance to get her breath back, do you? <laughs> come here. No. Come here. No. I said, come here. No. Come here. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, now ask me again. Go on, ask me what I like. Go on. I don't have time to be here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Morning, Mrs. Walker. Good morning. You come in, dear. It's only Freddie being a bit frisky. Really? Look at him. He looks like a big St. Bernard. If he gets too much, I suppose we could always take him to the vet, couldn't we, Mrs. Walker? I feel I'm hardly qualified to offer an opinion. Right, <coughs> breakfast then, is it? Oh, yes. Uh, are you going to join us, Mrs. Walker? You're more than welcome. Well, that's very kind, but I think I'll make myself a cup of tea just to be going on with. Two women in the same house. Good job we both know how to behave. Well, I don't know. I think Mrs. Walker's taking the shine to you, love. All the same, it wouldn't do any harm to give that brewery a reminder. Let them know we're still here. I will. I'll drop them a line later. Today? Yeah, I'll do it later on. I've never been one to outstay my welcome, and I don't intend to start now. Do we know anybody called Elsie? She says she's still at Thurlinder's and would we please keep an eye on the house? Thank you. The breakfast ready. She sounds cheerful enough. Mind you, you always do in a postcard, don't you? You've written having a wonderful time before you've even decided what to put. Hey, what's up? Oh. It's not something I've forgotten, is it? Wedding anniversary? Something? Ah, you've had your hair done. Well, you've got a face that had turned milk so you have since you got up this morning. Do you forget it? It's me that's miserable in the morning. Well, it's time I had a turn, then. All right, then be miserable if it's going to make you happy. Elsie said when she was coming back. No. Always got on with her, Linda, have not she? Must be nice, that. Insurance against your old age, you mean? Anybody home? Oh. It's no good I didn't know all them tricks. Now, what do you want? Just to spread a little bit of happiness and whatever else you put on that allotment of yours. You are. Well, I got a couple of days off, been man's rest. I thought you and me can nip down the allotments and do a bit of digging. Well, I mean, I'll do the digging, you do the gaff a bit. Oh, I don't know. All right, then. You do the digging, I'll do the gaff a bit. I'm open to negotiation. No, no, I think I'll stop here. Oh, come on, it'll do you good. Get a bit of sun on your cap. No. So, you know, most people are jumping an opportunity like that. All right, Eddie. Uh, I'm not stopping, it's just something I forgot. You won't believe this, Ken, but I've just offered to dig his allotment for him. And he won't even stare off his chair to come and watch me do it. Oh, staring from your chair can take a lot of doing when you get to Uncle Albert's age, you know? Oi! What are the privileges of old age, doing nothing? Yeah, well, I'm not going to twist his arms, don't worry. All right, I'll, I'll come. Oh. Well, I'll come in at the allotment and show you what's what. Are you sure you want to? Of course I'm sure. You know, you're a great one for changing your mind, aren't you? Oh, well, that's another privilege of old age. Oh, it'll be lovely, though. I've never been to a royal wedding or anything like that. To the end of the week? Please. Because, I mean, it's a bit of history, isn't it? You know, something to tell mm. your grandchildren about. Well, not that I've got any grandchildren, but, I mean, you could always tell somebody else's grandchildren about it. Uh, 3 85 and that includes your Sundays. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it'll be on television, I suppose, but, well, that's not the same as being there, is it? Well, if you're that keen, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, I must admit, so why don't we go for the day? To London? Yes. 385, 4, 1 makes 5. Thank you. Do you really mean it, Em? Well, of course I do. What about you, Rita? Why don't you come with us? No, thanks. Oh, I ever not. Well, they didn't stand on the corner of Rosamond Street and watch me get wed, did they? I'll put kettle on. She's got one of her moves on. Oh. You would be interested then. Oh, I would, Emily. I really would. I mean, well, it'd be almost as exciting as getting married myself. 
And that's the only reason she came. Well, so it seemed to me. To let us know that whatever we did, she wasn't going to have Uncle Albert living with her. I know Beatty of old. <laughs> Hey, you two, I can tell you something about this marriage, Lark, just in case you have any doubts about it. It's a grand thing. Is it, Fred? Champion it is. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't catch on. Well, we're prepared to give it another try. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, Ken. Yeah. Still, what we've got to sort out are uh, meals on wheels, home help, that sort of thing. What, for us, you mean? Well, of course for us. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Albert as well. Yeah. Actually, Alf might be the man to ask. Is he still on the Social Services Committee? Oh, yeah. Oh, talking of Alf, that reminds me I said he'd be back half past. Ooh, you better get your skates on. Ta -da. Bye. Has the, uh, has the brewery said anything yet? What about? What do you know about this pub you're supposed to be getting? Oh, fair dues, Betty. I mean, these things don't happen overnight, do they? I mean, how long Mrs Walker going to let you stop in here, though? Well, question of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You're scratching Mrs Walker's back, then? No. She has to have a pot, man, hasn't she? So it serves her purpose, me being here. She won't want to see the back of me for a long time, I'm telling you. Oh? Uh, Fred, can I have another half, please, and, uh, fine, lad? Ah, yeah, if it's quick. Me dinner's waiting for me at home. I could do with it at all after this morning. Oh? I put the shower in. It's time of year, is it? Oh, ah, yeah, until September. And then it's central eating, after that it's burst pipes, and then it's fitted kitchens, and then back to the shower again. <laughs> the four seasons, eh? Well, that's all I ever see of it. Yeah, hello. Oh, yeah, do you want a pint? It's my shower. Oh, thanks so much. Another pint, then, Ken? Yes. Hey, listen, Deirdre said you wanted a word with me. Oh, yes, that's right. About yeah. Albert. Yeah, I just want to make sure he's OK when he's on his own, you ah, know. of course. I mean, uh, I'll be keeping an eye on him, but... Uh, well, I was wondering if you knew anything about uh, home health, anything about... Well, that. I ought to do. I mean, it's my patch, isn't it? Mind you, I should warn you, there's more wants than the can have on. There you go, one pound fifteen, Ken. Hey, I should pay up quick before it goes up again, I know. <laughs> well, you fellas must be dragging in some wages, you know, the price of this yeah. nowadays. We don't get it, mate. Do we heckers like? Hey, listen, I'm going to be in the town all this afternoon. I'll pick some bum up for you then, if you like. Oh, if you wouldn't mind. Well, we might as well get the ball rolling, you know, get Albert's name down on a list and see what happens. Oh, great. It's good soil, this, you know, Albert. Aye, not bad. It's full of little worms. They keep sticking their heads up to see who I am. Yeah, well, any worms, leave them. I am leaving them. Now what the heck's up? I'm trying to breathe. It's hard work, this, you know. That were your idea. All right, all right, I know. Still, always fancy the outdoor life, having a garden and that. Although where I got it from, I don't know. I mean, the only time my family ever had a spade in their hand was when they had to clear the snow from the bog. <laughs> right. Well, get on with it. Hang on, there was a rumour that my dad was related to gypsies. That must be what it is. Ah. Hey, we're not late, am I? No. Well, what are we having? What do you want? Well, haven't you made out? Not yet. Well, what do we usually have on a Monday? What are you having? I don't want to. No? No. What's the matter? Is it because of calling the Rovers first? Call where you want. Then why is there no flaming dinner on the table? Just tell me what you want. And you'll make it. I know I heard you the first time. Look, this isn't a flipping cafe that I come back to, you know. Where I can order a meal and sit down and have it on me tub. Do you mind telling me what all this is in aid of? Because there's been something up since this morning. Do you want any dinner? No. Right. Well, I'll get back. Are you doing this to get me going or what? Look, I don't happen to be hungry. Now, that's not a crime, is it? Not that I know of, and no. And all right, so I'm not the life and soul of anybody's party. Ah. But God help anybody who is on a Monday morning. Now, do you want any dinner or don't you? Will you stop asking me that? All right, I'll stop asking you. But do you? No. Right. Hey. I don't have to come back here for me dinner, you know. But when I do, it's because I live here. This is my home. Not just some place I come to where they can throw me pie at me. I know. Well, you can flip and stay out and all. So they're definitely moving then, Addy. Aye. I'll be fending for myself before long. Rough, that is. And I'm 85, you know. Yeah? 86 from August. Well, I'll tell you what, you're in good shape. You're in better shape than Stan. 
my daughter came around to see me and she didn't want me either. And there you are. I'll be fending for myself. Yeah, rough is that. Nobody wants you when you're old. And they'll find out one day. Yeah, but I mean, from Ken's point of view, like, uh, with them having the kiddie, like, they probably feel that there isn't enough room. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Still, it is rough, isn't it? Oh, hello, Mr. Fenton. Is Rita not in? No, she's gone out for a walk. Where? I don't know. She just said I'm going for a walk, and she went. Give us a bar of chocolate, will you? Mm, eat in between meals. No, this is instead of a meal. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, 26 pence, please. Mavis, uh, has she sort of said anything, like? Rita? Yeah. Uh, about uh, me, me, you know. Oh, no, not recently. Uh, something I've done wrong or something I've forgotten. Or is it you? Uh, is it you that's made her like this? Me? What have I done wrong? No, 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 it's all right. Forget it. Forget it. Uh, don't, don't mention that I've been asking, will you? All right. And if she asks about me, just act dumb. Yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you would. Go on, get up, if you get up home. <laughs> I know we depend on their custom, but it's a very satisfying feeling when the door closes on the last one. I like feeling that your home's your own again, eh? Oh, my dear, a feeling I'd be very grateful for at the moment. Oh? Well, I haven't been able to claim my home as my home for past a part of a week. Fred and Eunice. It's not that I mind helping them, no. putting them up for a time. It's the feeling that they are putting up with me that I find so intolerable. Yes. Between you and me, Elizabeth, it's the constant domestic association that I admit I never foresaw. Oh, well, it won't be for much It's longer. got the stage, dear, when I dread going into my own living room. Oh, it won't be for long. Oh, I do hope not. I mean, I realise the problem about finding a replacement for Fred. And there was a time when I found it quite a relief that they were staying here, but mm. not any longer, my dear. Mm. The sooner he finds a pub of his own, the happier I shall be. Uh, and I'm hoping, therefore, that you will now be able to consider my application as soon as possible. Immediately. Uh, immediately. Immediately. There, that's it. Yours faithfully, F. Frederick G. Mister. What do you think, love? Well, they must be on the phone. Couldn't you just give them a ring? Yeah. You'll have enjoyed that, a bit of fresh air. Ah, oh, well, it's a change to see somebody willing to do a bit of work. What, Eddie? Aye. Ah, oh, well, he's not a bad sort of a lad. Given half the chance. No, it was, it was Ken I came to see, you know. Oh, he's gone out. Aye. Well, I, I've got this from the town hall for him. What is it? It's just some bump about home help. So, well, you know, the sort of thing. Oh, for in here? Yeah, I think that's the idea. Well, I'm not having any woman coming here and shifting stuff about and telling me what to do in my own house. Al, but it's not like that. Oh, indeed. Uh, anyway, I'll, um, look, I'll leave it with you, and then he can tell you all about it. You can do what you like. Yeah, well, I'll see you later, then. Happen. Hello. Well, I'm still on that caper, are we? Hello, love. Had a half day. Hard enough to want a bite to eat when I come home from work. Sausage and mash, do. Where? Keeping warm in something. To be followed by apple pie, also keeping warm in something. I'm glad it came. I wasn't going to, you know. Don't push your luck. Just be grateful for what you're about to receive. I must will. Oops. Navy said you'd call. Yeah. She said you'd gone out for a walk. Anywhere special? 
Couldn't walk to anywhere special round here in less than a fortnight. What'd you do then? Go on one of those things the Aborigines do. Go walk about. Something like that. Oh, well. As long as you got it out of your system. Whatever it was. There you go, love. Yeah. See everything from there. Yeah, very nice. Ah, good evening, ladies. Hello. Oh, I've got you working here now, then, have they? Oh, no. No, you could say I was rehearsing for when we get a pub of our own. <laughs> oh. Well, I am, so... What are you ladies having? A glass of cider, please. I'll have a pineapple juice. Cider pineapple juice. And the teeniest of dry sherries for me, Freddie, while you're at it. Right. Yes. I was going to ask if I was needed, but it's quite evident I'm not. Would you like me to have a word with Fred, Mrs. Walker, and suggest that she goes to the other side of the bar? No, Elizabeth, no. If there are words to be had, I will have them. Well, I mean, would you credit it? What's that, dear? Well, the way she's just gone and sat herself there. She's not a woman of tact or discretion, mm. our Mrs. G, which is why I have to exercise enough for the two of us. Oi, oi, Fred, and a dry sherry. Huh? A dry sherry. Eunice, or is she buying her own? Don't worry, Betty, I was going to put it in, weren't I? She's not the landlady here yet, you know. Back in the land of the living. Uh, hey. Oh. Hey, how about, a, how about an hour down the Rovers, eh? Go and see the real comedian Len. instead of that lot on telly, what? I want you to listen to me first. Yeah. There's something I want to ask you. Yeah. Can I turn this off? Yeah, yeah. Is I'm in a lovely dream, then. I've been doing a bit of dreaming myself. Oh, I. What about this time? Oh, no, listen, then, please. I'm listening. Well, we've been married, what, four years? Yeah. yeah. And we've had our ups and downs, like everybody else. But one thing we haven't had, we've never had a kiddie in this house. A kid? Well, now, listen, please, I'm listening. Then. I mean... Well, I'm not getting any younger, am I? I'm not complaining. I was quite happy to let things go on as they were. But I wouldn't like to go through life without being somebody's mother. And before you say it, I know I'm too old to have one myself. Well? But what I've been thinking, we could always adopt. Well, other people do. And it needn't be a baby. It could be a toddler. And I have thought about it. Believe me, I have. I've thought about nothing else. And it's what I want to do, Len. Have you any idea what that, that would mean to us? Yes. I'd have to give up work. And the rest. It'd be like chucking a bomb under the house. Under us. I know what's brought this on. The babysitting you've been doing round at Tilsley's, that's it, isn't it? Not only that, but what if it were? Why should I be different, Len? It's what I need. It's not what I need, somebody else's kid. But it wouldn't be somebody else's if we adopted it. It would to me. <laughs> yeah. We're way past that. No. No, no way am I going in for that luck. Well, what did you expect? If you'd have thought about it, really, you'd know what I'd say. I did. <laughs> well, then. I just hoped I were wrong, didn't I? Do you know, I don't know what people go on about Japanese productivity for. I don't, honest. Well, they sell more cars than we do, don't they? They don't sell more beers, do they? No. <laughs> and snooker and football. I mean, we're miles better. 
I don't play, do they? Ah, that's because they're scared of getting beaten. And I'll tell you something else that we're better at now. What? Refuse disposal. I thought you'd say that. Well, it's true. I mean, you hear about jack productivity with cars, you don't hear about their productivity with refuse disposal, do you? Oh, give over. And I'll tell you why. It's because them Japs are only little fellas, aren't they? Takes two of them to carry one bin. Well, there's the productivity cut in half for the start, isn't it? Yeah. Evening. Hey, Hello. Uh, has Deirdre been in yet? Freddy? Hello. Has Deirdre been in tonight? Yes, yeah, just I was expecting her around this time, you know. I haven't seen her. Hey, not unless she's tickled off with somebody else. Oh, uh, listen, Jim. <laughs> uh, well, I'll have a pint while I'm waiting. Anyway. Oh, can a pint? Yes. It's been a lovely day, hasn't it? Yes, it, it has. Oh, uh, I'll take it in the snug if you don't mind. Of course, we Excuse don't. Excuse me. Evening. I'll do. Oh. Oh, so this is where you got to. You want another? No. Oh. Can I see a rum? No. All right, seat yourself. There you go, Ken. 46, please. I'll, uh, I'll give you a shoulder for anything about Deirdre. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Cheers. You don't need to tear up that leaflet, you know. I've no need to do out. I no need to hear folks fixing things behind my back for one thing. Look, Uncle Albert, nobody's fixing anything behind your back. We just want to know what all the possibilities are, and then we can talk about them. Well, you needn't bother. Look, Uncle Albert, we care about you, and we want to make the best arrangements possible. Now, what's wrong with that? I'm surprised you haven't stuck me in one of them there homes. Old folks' homes. Well, nobody said anything about old folks' homes. I'd be the last to hear about it, wouldn't I? You'd be carting me off before anybody told me what was happening. Yeah, well, how can I tell you what's happening if you refuse to discuss anything sensibly? Oh, shut me away in one of them there all. Oh, for heaven's sake. And that'd suit everybody, wouldn't well, it? Well, Uncle Albert. Well, now where are you going? All right, Albert. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Squire. Uh, look, I know it's none of my business. I've just seen Albert leaving. Oh, yeah. Only he was saying that when you and Deirdre are wed, he's going to be left to his own devices. Oh, he was, was he? Well, he seemed a bit upset. I mean, I can see his point of view, you know what I mean? Yes, I think I know what you mean. I mean, it can't be much fun at his age, can it? Peeling spuds on your own. Eddie. What? I appreciate your concern, but believe me, whatever it is I've told you, I'm not planning to just walk out and never set foot in there again. Oh, not I saying... mean, if only you talk about it, we could sort the whole thing out. But you know what he's like. Yeah, he can be a bit consanctious, can he? A bit. <laughs> I think Brezhnev's easier to talk to than he is. I'm not criticising or not, and I'm just... Saying? Yeah. Right. Well, thanks, but I do know. Fair enough. No, no, no. Oh, I'm going away. What? He's on the floor. He's falling over or something. I, oh, I was no. jumping down the street. Uncle Albert? What are we going to do? Well, he's breathing's all right. Look, shall I phone an ambulance or something? Look, can we get the keys out of this pocket? Right. Now, open the door and we'll try to get him inside. Okay. I did not, but the door was open. I think you were too busy casing this at the time. Yeah, well, I can't waste any more time. I'll have to do without now. Well, it got jammed, didn't it? If you will, use door steps. Uh, I uh, thought I had voices. Oh, how did that go down? Oh, fine. Oh, that's something, anyway. Doesn't he mind? What? I mean, uh, doesn't he say nothing? Albert? Say nothing about what? Well, like... Eh, this toast is knackered, Ken. You'll have to put one down on your wedding present list. <laughs> I hope you don't mean what I think you mean, Eddie. I didn't mean nothing. I, I didn't say nothing. Listen, I'm here to make sure Uncle Albert gets a proper breakfast. That's why I'm here. Now, why are you here? Ah, uh, I came to see if he's going down the allotments. Oh, he's not going to no allotment. He's not going out of that bed. Why, well, what's up? Oh, you're not hurt. He's had a bit of a fall. Oh, no. Is he all right? Yeah, it's a bit shaken up, that's all. It's nothing serious, we don't think. Have you had the doctor? Well, naturally, yeah. How did it happen? Well, we found him last night. He uh, fell just outside the door. I think he tripped over a paving stone. Can I go and see him? Uncle Albert, do you want a visitor? Who is it? It's your little gnome from the allotment. Who? Eddie! Oh. <laughs> go on. Come and ready on us, Alvis. 
Why did you say he trips? Well, we don't want to dramatise it too much, do we, saying he collapsed? Well, for all we know, he did just collapse. Uh, yes, and for all we know, he did trip over a paving stone, didn't he? I mean, he said he came over funny, well... Well, what does that mean? Well, it means, I think, that whatever happened, he's making the most of it. That's a bit heartless, isn't it? Well, I know why he's doing it, instead of you. Well, yeah, of course I do. I'd be stupid if look, I look, didn't. Look, look, we've got our own lives to lead, right? So far, they've found nothing wrong with him at all. Now, supposing they're dead. Supposing you needed pretty constant attention, how could we do it? Even if... Well, you'd just have to go into hospital like anybody else. Why won't you take me seriously? That's all. I do take you seriously. I don't just think it's a very serious idea, that's all. It's not on, honest. All this has come from you babysitting. For Gail's baby. You'd have never thought about it otherwise. Do you think this is the first time it's entered my head? Oh, I don't know. Do you think it's ever occurred to me before? You've never mentioned it to me before. Yeah, well, sometimes you're not worth talking to. Now, what the hell is that supposed to mean? It means I know exactly how you'll react, and you're doing it. <sighs> you won't even talk about it. Well, what's the point? It's a non-starter from the word go. You know that. Deep down, you know that. Deep down, I know just the opposite. There's one more thing. You and me are too old to adopt a baby. Do you feel old? They, they don't ask you that. They ask you for your birth certificate. I don't feel old. I don't feel too old to bring up a baby, and I know I'm not too old to bring up an older it's child. It's not me that's saying you can't adopt one. It's them. It's what they'll tell you, the, the adoption agencies. Have we asked? There's a queue a mile long of young people, young childless couples. Honest. Are you trying to tell me there isn't one kid that doesn't get left? Not one? I'm sorry, Len. I don't want to row. I don't want to row over this, do I? I can understand, love. I can. Perhaps if, if you and me had met a lot earlier, we might have had a whole load of kids, but... I, I can understand, really, I can. But it's not on. I just can't accept that. No. I know you can't. Look, supposing we have a bit of a holiday, you won't feel so broody then. When I finish this job... I'm not feeling broody. All right. I am feeling broody. But don't tell me understand because I don't think you can. I just don't think men can. So you don't understand why common sense can't put me off. Well, I've done the bar and cellar, Mrs. Walker. Everything's A-OK. -okay. All ready for lift off, like. Hmm? But it's already all you've got to do is open the doors. Here you have them, brisk. Marriage obviously agrees with you. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking of taking the day off, Mrs. Walker. Well, oh. it is a bit day off, you know, and I was thinking of taking it, you know, off, like. So you won't be here? No, I was thinking of going to Old Trafford. There's a makings of a good match there, and, well, it's the, it's the day for it, isn't it? So you're going to cricket? Yeah, taking my son up with the radio. <laughs> <laughs> my Jack was very fond of watching the cricket whenever he got the chance. There was one player he thought the world of. I think he played for Old Trafford. Oh, no, no, it'd be, it'd be Lancashire, Mrs Walker. Mm. Well, apparently he was only a little fellow, but very dogged. <laughs> now, who would that be? Let's see would now. it be Freddie Truman? Then? No, 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 it wouldn't be Freddie, no, no. <laughs> oh, Jack must have mentioned his name heaps of times. <laughs> anyway, Mrs Walker, what I was thinking was that, uh, <clears throat> well, w w would you be needing the, the rover like? Oh. Well, does that mean you would? What time does the cricket start? Well, I thought I'd get there for about uh, half eleven like. I was going to ask you to take me into town. I desperately need a pair of new shoes, and I would mm. drive myself. But it's the multi-storey. Mm. And as you know, multi-stories and I are incompatible. Well, I suppose I could take you, Mrs Walker, if you've got your skates on, you know. It's no trouble to me. And then I could uh, <coughs> have the rover after, like. Good morning. Oh, well, you're down. How are you? Ready for another day sitting at your feet learning, Mrs Walker? I'm picking up ever such a lot by just watching you. Well, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to borrow your husband. He's going to show for me into town. I thought you were going to the cricket. Well, I'm just giving Mrs Walker a lift, like, you know. Oh, you've some hold over him. I haven't, Mrs Walker, because when I no, mentioned uh, going yeah, to yeah, the yeah. shops, well, it is a matter of life and death, it's cricket. I'm only doing a favour, love. 
Where are you thinking of going, Mrs. Walker? Well, I do want a pair of shoes, and I've got rather individual feet, and funny as it is, only the better class shops seem to stock a fit. Well, why don't you go into Altringham? It's no further. Well, hardly, and there's some lovely shops there. That's a very good idea. Mm, lovely shops. Is this a multi-storey car park? Aye. Oh, what a shame. Even Altringham succumbs. Would it make much difference, Fred? No, no, it'll be no trouble, Mrs. Walker. Well, then, Altringham it is. Well, uh, we get your skates on, then. I won't be five minutes. I'll just go and change. Huh? Well, if you're going into Altringham anyway, I might as well go with you, only to look at the shops. Well, he's serious. Think it's ridiculous? No, um... You don't? Well, I don't know what to think. I mean... Oh, it's something you've really got to think about. Or do you think we were too old? Well, I don't know. Do you think we are? Look, it isn't something I've ever been into. Well, I want to know what you no, think. I don't know what these people say. Well, whatever they ask, we could still have a good few years left yet, surely, to go. But, I mean, that won't be the only question they ask, will it? I mean, well, they're bound to want to know if it's a stable marriage, you know, that sort of background. So, Len's been divorced. And? And what? Well, I mean, they're likely to know, want to know what, if you're going to stick together. Well, they can't see me and Len splitting up. Well, you did walk out on him, Reed. I think the short answer to that is, look how far I got. Well, what does Len think? Mm. Yeah. You have mentioned it to him. Oh, I have mentioned it. And? Mm. Is he not so keen? I don't think the idea's sunk in yet. Oh, Rita, you can't even begin to think of going ahead unless it... I mean, it wouldn't be right or fair to the child or anything if, if Len was the slightest bit reluctant. I mean, these adoption societies, they want commitment, absolute commitment on both sides. Yes, Mavis, I know what you're trying to say. Aye, aye. Tell you, I've got a post box just outside the front door. I've got to walk all the way down to the post office to get this thing weighed. Oh, aye. Well, cheer up, lovely day like this. Don't talk to me, Alf. I'm only the flipping show for me, aren't I? Oh, I see. Going out in the state coach, is she? Got ropes in, don't I? The pair of them. Shopping. Flipping shopping. Oh. Yeah, well, I've got to stand in the shop all day, haven't I? I mean, a day like this, I feel like shutting up and going down to watch cricket. Can't do better, can you? Looks like they've been a decent match and all. Alf, have you ever been belted over the head? You know, when he didn't know why and you were least expecting it. Not like I can remember. No, but he coming very near to it, Alf, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, come on, will you, for crying out loud? Me, Uncle Albert. How are you? Hey, what are you doing out of bed? Hello, Hi. Mike. I'm just making Uncle Albert some cheese on toast. Right. Uh, it's a bit warm lying in bed. Yes, well, the doctor said you'd have to stay there. But I'd sooner be down here. Find out what's going on behind my back. There's nothing going on. Look, I'm not a little kid, you know. If I want to get out of bed in my own house, I will. And it still is my house, you know. Not in the workhouse yet. Or am I? Now, look, I'm not going to talk to you if you're going to make stupid statements like that. Stupid, eh? It's more like Russia every day. If you don't suit over there, you know, they have you certified. Sticking a blooming asylum. Uh, do you want some cheese on toast as well, Uh Yes, please, yeah. Anyway, how are you feeling now? Terrible. And I'll have a bit of brown sauce on mine. Digestion unimpaired, I see. Ken? Are you ready? Start up. I'm not kidding you. You could have built it me with a phobie too when she said it. Bit of a face, isn't it? Adopting a kitty, eh? Thank you. She's had it in her mind a long time, you know. But of course, there's been an epidemic of kids lately, haven't there? Tell you what, from the council's point of view, you're too old, both of you. And if you don't mind my saying so, by a fairly long show. I don't think I haven't already told you. Of course, there's other agencies. Whether they'll have the same requirements or not, I don't know. I should think so, though. I mean, they all say more or less the same thing, don't they? Oh, what do you say about it? <laughs> Has it got anything to do with me? Well, don't kid yourself, it doesn't, mate. Of course, the question is, really, how would I take to having a kid around the place again? The answer to that is, how the hell do I know? Well, you must have leanings one way or the other. I mean, if it was me... 
If it was you. Well, if Rena was still alive, like, and she'd said the same thing, I'd be for it, I think. If that's what I thought. I will, mate. I've got a son. Look at the kind of father I turned out. You're a different fella now, though, aren't you? How am I asking? Hello, Mrs. Walker. Right. I hope you've not spent my wages. Elizabeth, dear, when you want to do some serious shopping, do it on your own. Do you watch no, this? No, can't yeah. you? Yeah. They'll have gone to lunch now. They play after lunch, don't they? Oh, never mind. I can't think why the whole day is in that silly ball. It's not just it in the silly ball, is it? Ah, you've been a little goody today. You go to your crickets. Fred, there's a letter for you, love. Oh, I'll get it after. Oi, oi. It says Newton and Ridley on the envelope. Newton and Ridley. That was quick. You only phoned the other day. Too quick. Well, open it. Don't ask me to read it. Just tell me what it says. I think it is clean. We've got an interview, haven't we? A vacancy's arisen. A vacancy's arisen. A vacancy has arisen. Good news, is it, Fred? <laughs> He's not in bed. He wouldn't stay there. Good sign, even if it's not a good idea. Yes, uh, he's in there, but before you go, could I have a word with you? Certainly. No. Hello, Mr. Tatlock. Hello, Doctor. You should have been chased straight back to bed. Oh, I'm better off down here. You're feeling pretty cheerful anyway. I'm always cheerful. Let's see if we can detect any signs of life, shall we? Just uh, unbutton your pyjamas, will you? No need for you to still stand there gulping, you know. I'll see you before you go, Doctor. Right. I'm very pleased for you, Fred. Very pleased. Well, I'm not counting my chickens, Mrs. Walker, but... Now, uh... I am sure of this, that you will be taken at least as seriously as any other applicant, any. You know, I've really enjoyed my time here, Mrs. Walker, and, well, I'm sure it'll be useful to me. I hope so. It is my sincere hope you'll be able to look back and say that you profited by it. I'm <laughs> sure I will. Anyway, I just thought I'd pop in and, and let you know. Go to cricket, are you? can take the car. Oh, no, Mrs Walker. I'm too worked up by all this. I couldn't settle to a game of cricket now. Down all the same. And uh, you're here pretty well all the time, Mr Barlow. Well, I have to go to work. There's no one else in the house? No, just the two of us. But there are one or two neighbours who'll drop in, you know, who'll keep an eye on him. Oh, well, that's no bad thing. Um, is there anything particular, you know, that uh, we should worry about? Oh, the effects of Anno Domini, Mr Barlow? When you reach his tally, you need keeping an eye on. He's in pretty good shape, considering. If I can put it like this, he's far too healthy to be put into hospital. But he's not really well enough to be left on his own. But as long as there's no danger of uh, that... Do you mean at the moment, or...? Well, uh, old age is not something you grow out of, Mr Barlow. No. Well, uh... I won't come again unless you call me. I don't think there's any need. Right. Well, thank you for coming, Doctor. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, Rita, believe me, I know how you feel. I shall go to my grave regretting I never had children. I remember you fostering a couple. Oh, yes, not for very long, really. But you never did again. No, I think we would have done. You have to be emotionally resilient, I think, for fostering. It was quite a shock to the system, really, but very... Well, I think it could be very fulfilling. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I want a child that's ours. One of us. I just know we ought to be somebody's mum and dad. Well, as I say, Ernest and I knew a couple who adopted, and, and they must have been... Well, about your age, you and Len. Who oh, Len thinks we've no chance. Well, if he doesn't really actively want to adopt, I think you've got to forget it altogether. Oh, I've just told her exactly the same. Oh, he's a man. Not there like. It just frightened it change. Maybe a bit deeper than that. Oh, I don't think he's got any deep feelings either way. But he must have. I mean, if you're going to adopt, well, you must both have deep, positive feelings about it. Well, Mavis is right. Both parents should positively, eagerly want that child. Well, if that's the case, the adopted child gets off to a much better start than most I've heard of. And they do all right. Oh! Oh, hello, Mrs Walker. I've just borrowed your ironing board. I hope you don't mind. I think you might have mentioned it. Well, I thought you were having a snooze. A snooze? 
I went up to my room to seek a little peace and quiet to do my correspondence. I only wish I had time for a snooze. Well, if you've got anything you want ironing, no, I don't that's mind. Quite all right. Oh, go on. I'm a good ironer. Oh well. I have got one or two bits and pieces. Well, throw it in, because I'm ironing everything I've got that's fit to wear. You do seem to have taken something of a fit. Well, I'm wondering what to wear, Mrs Walker, you know, for the interview. Mm. Well, I was thinking of trying different bits and bobs. For instance, that blouse I bought this mm. morning with my other coat, the turquoise mm. one. Only I'm wondering now if I shouldn't have bought something a little more... I know what you mean. Mm. little more restrained. Mm, there's nothing mm. very restrained in that blouse, is there? No. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wear a different outfit every day until the interview, and you can give me the verdict. Well, it could be something like that that would just tip the balance. Mm, but my verdict may not be the same as your verdict. Well, I would uh, value your advice, Mrs Walker, because I do realise there is a gulf. A gulf between being a barmaid and being a landlady. And you'll see it more and more. It's true, though. It's a gulf. A gulf, dear. And for someone who's hoping to cross that gulf, anything you say, Mrs Walker, because you are a landlady. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I'm only saying what anybody can see for themselves. I mean, it's impossible to imagine you ever being a barmaid. Impossible. Do you know, dear, I think you might turn into a landlady yourself. <sighs> you don't know what it means to me, do you? You say that, Mrs mm. Walker. Mm. Uh, I wonder what shirt Fred will want to wear for the interview. I'll go and ask him. Mm. You just bring your ironing down, Mrs Walker. Mm. Fred? Fred, I'm wondering which shirt you want to wear for the interview. Hmm? Which shirt? Which one what for well of? Oh, Fred, how much have you had to drink? <laughs> well, I have flattered myself to a drink or two, love, haven't I? <laughs> I don't mind admitting it, love, because this is a day to remember, and I'm going to savour every moment of it. You know, I've waited, love, I've waited and waited, and now my time has come, and I'm going to make the most of it. My time has come. <laughs> Oh, well. oh, Fred. Cheers, love. Ah, Mrs. Walker. Yes, Fred. Ah, oh, you're a good nanny, love. <laughs> I did it my way. <laughs> Is it about time for you to take your stuff? No, I'll wait till dinner time. I'll get round to that eventually. Two of these, is it? Aye. What's this stuff for, anyway? Well, it's to settle me down, she says. What's it taste like? All right. I've been thinking. Yeah. When we get married, is it all right by you if we move in here? Uh, well, y yes, of course it is. Well, that's what we'll do then. But, but what about that house of yours? Oh, never mind about that. You'll not regret it, Ken. You'll never regret it. Right, well, I'll go and do the spuds then. You won't. Not be a burden to you. Never have been. I'm not going to be. Whoever said you were. He, <laughs> he, he, I'm glad. And is really agreeable? Well, I hope so. You mean you hope so? Well, I do, don't you? Well, let me set out to her. Not yet. But I've made my mind up. <laughs> Rapid food again. Just be thankful it's summer. Wasn't a bad day anyway. Paper's over there if you want it. Down. I was talking to Alf Roberts at dinner time. <laughs> and even does well. Well, he's been on the social services committee for years. It's like I said, as far as Weatherfield's concerned, we're miles past it, you and me. Well, I did ask him. You know. I'm not just going on. I would like to know. 
If we weren't too old, would you be absolutely dead against it? Is there any point in asking? Is that my answer? Oh, look, kiddo, look who you're asking. I mean, as a father, I wasn't exactly the world's greatest success, was I? I've got a kid, yeah, I've got a son, but as far as he's concerned, he doesn't care whether I'm alive or dead. Looking back, I know why. It'd be different now. Why would it? Because now you can look back and see why. It's not on love. In your heart, you know that. Someone Emily Bishop knows. They adopted. They're the same age as us. Didn't go through in council, though. Someone Emily Bishop knows. Teetotal. Church every Sunday. Never a foot wrong. Just like us. There's no point in asking for what you can't have, you know. You'll just crucify yourself. Yeah, well, I wish we had a kid and all. But you don't, do you? Oh, God. Oh, please don't start crying on me, please. Yeah, all right, we probably should have had kids. But by this time, we should be going to their weddings. Nobody's going to let you adopt a baby. Just forget it, that's all. Don't ask for something you can't have. Kettle on, Hilda. Never flaming off. Only, but only down the corner, I thought I'd pop in. Oh, I skive in again. Listen, we've never stopped. An hour on them bins and you've got a throat like a wrestler's armpit. Yeah, well, don't take all the milk. And if Stan hasn't crawled out yet, you can give him a shout. Got a busy day planned, have you? Yeah, going through this house like a dose of salts. I'll tell you what, if I was that half rug, I'd have you for assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> Look, never mind the cracks. Just you tell that human fog on up there to shift yourself. Right, boss. And tell him I want his underwear for the wash. Right, boss. By heck, Hilda, you're making an early start. Yeah, well, somebody has to. House gets a right flaming muck heap. Oh, I only, I'm just pegging out, so if you've got any more carpets to bat, I'd better not put any whites out. Oh, well, I've only got this one, but, uh, of course, if you've got any wedding things... Oh, uh, I think I've a bit yet for my wedding things, Hilda. Yeah, not that you'll be having white, of course. I mean, it being your second. Well, this is no law. No? No, but isn't it more what the vicar says, like? Some of these vicars can be very particular. I think I could have white if I wanted it, Hilda. Yeah, if you find one of them swinging vicars, as they call themselves. <laughs> oh, the wedding bells go sing a ling a ling for you and not for me. La da 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 dee 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 dee. Da da da. <laughs> La da dee. Like a flipping dust storm out there. It's ill to beat an out of her one of her carpets. Doing a spring cleaning. She does everybody else's, then gets round to doing her own. So long as she doesn't spring clean Stan. <laughs> I can just hear it scream. Anyway, what's made you put your pinny on so soon? I got up at seven. I couldn't sleep. I went out like a light. I know, you were well away. Got it all off my chest and then felt drained. I nudged you a couple of times. You weren't talking. I suppose you wanted to tell me how daft I am. Look, love, you made it crystal clear last night that you want to adopt a kid. Well, that means us adopting one, doesn't well, it? Well, of course it means us. I've done all the predictable things. I've slammed out of the house. I've choked you off. I've said to myself, yeah, well, she's just at, a, at an awkward age now, and she's not really the maternal type. You've said now that I haven't. I mean, we've got over all the argy-bargy. That was all down to me, though, wasn't it? Because when you start springing things on me... It does go deep. I mean, it's not just me seeking attention. I know it goes deep, love. After what you said last night, I can see that. But we have got to discuss it, haven't we? You know, we've got to be methodical. First, uh, what sort of age would you like it? Well... Now, before you say any more, I know we're not going to buy a second-hand car. What sort of model is it? What's it worth? Has it been MOT? <laughs> it is a bit different, isn't it? But I wasn't going to say that because, basically, I agree with you. I mean, all that's got to be discussed, hasn't it? Um, baby, <sighs> toddler, boy, girl, all that's important. Well, then... Well, I suppose I'd like a little girl of about two or three that we can bring up as our own. Oh, I see. Well, 
Doesn't the thought of that do anything for you? I don't know. I don't honestly know what it does for me. I mean, I well remember pushing Stanley out in the pram in the park on a Sunday afternoon. They weren't bad days. But when I think of these problems, the answer's got to be no. Anyway, I'll be in the yard till about nine o'clock, love, and after that I'll be up Rochdale Road. I've got some flashings to look after there. I'll see you at dinner time, eh? Hello, it's me. Has Deirdre landed? Said she'd pop in for lunch. I just had no idea it was that time. Oh, it's gone twelve. You fancy a pizza? What? A pizza. It's Italian. It's not ice cream, is it? No. Nothing like ice cream. Oh, one of your own concoctions, eh? Or, or is Deirdre fetching it? No, it comes in a packet. Probably make it in Doncaster by the ton, I shouldn't wonder. I don't care where it was made, but it sounds like foreign muck to me. Well, don't you go saying that to Deirdre. But she'll have to be told, won't she? Especially if she's buying it. Any roll. I don't want any of that Italian stuff for my breakfast. I want porridge. Oh, look, Uncle Albert, I'm marrying her, you know, not taking on a housekeeper. Oh, you are. Don't worry, I'll give her strict instructions about your porridge. Oh. Did you, uh, did you tell her about, uh... About staying here? Yeah, we discussed it last night. And the wedding's not cancelled? <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, I suggested it about one second before she did. But if you keep going on about foreign muck and being pernickety about your porridge... Off and on, is it? Table laid, well done. Uh, no Tracy? No, she's stopping in the shop with how she won't come. Um, it's pizza for lunch, by the way. It's Italian, but I think you'll like it. After all, they were on our side, weren't they? The Italian's on our side. Yeah, well, maybe they weren't on our side. But anyway, it's very nice with a bit of salad. With these little radishes? Yeah, I should think so. Well, well I've got a bunch out there. Your mother will give me off his allotment. And eat his daughter's please, Raddy. She's his jaw muscle. I, uh... Is he pleased with staying? Well, he certainly wouldn't be eating pizza if he wasn't. <laughs> what about you? You got any doubts? Well, the main thing's going to be privacy, isn't mm -hmm. it? But, um, I had an idea about that. I'll, uh, I'll top and tail these. <clears throat> With a bit of cheese, you can't beat a fresh rabbit. Uh, you will have some pizza as well, though. Oh, I'll have a bit. Seeing as how you brought it, but, but I don't want much. <laughs> oh. Do you reckon there'll be any nosh then? Oh, a bit so, well, perhaps. It's not on, you know, Stan. The arrangement is full board. Won the pulls, have you? I wish you'd give over. I mean, you need your grub if you've been on the bench since six. No, they're not feeding you. Not even a flaming cream cracker. She's having one of her cleaning dues. It's a murder. I mean, that's what I'm tipping up for, full board. That's a, a knife and fork, sit down, nosh twice a day. That's what I'm tipping up for. Oh, look, you'll have to tell her. Do you reckon? Do you reckon I'm within my rights? Look, if she's taking hard cash. Oh, but there the, the should be something on tonight. Stanley, it should have already been on the table. And what was on the table? A flaming cold scuttle was on the table and a flaming fender. And when I made a polite reference to being famished, what did I get? I got abuse, that's what I got. And fear to that abuse, I got threats and all. Well, it's not good enough, Stanley. What's Eddie shouting about? You've heard of the hungry fighter? Much worse than that. I'll buy it. The hungry bin man. <laughs> hey, where is, where's he at to? What do you think? He's gone to see our earlier about his flaming bill. Come in. As long as you wipe your feet and whistle a tune. I've just been in the shop. Now I've told me the news about you moving in here. Well, it seemed like the best idea in the end. Well, obviously, I'm pleased. Mind you, I've not taken up residence yet. Just been doing the lunch for them. Sort of a trial run, you know. Is it a success? Well, the plates were clean. Sit yourself down, love. I'll make you a cup of tea, but I've just rinsed teapots. Oh, well, if you're in a rush. No, oh, no, it's all right. I've got five minutes. It's Ken upstairs? No, he's just this minute gone back to the centre. And Albert's gone to collect his pension. Just having a way up what to do with these walls. Well, doesn't Albert have rather strong opinions about that kind of thing? Albert's opinions are about as strong as his radishes, or Joe Mossop's radishes, whoever Joe Mossop might be. Joe Mossop wins prizes for radishes. Oh, I had to have pizza on him today. On Albert? Yeah. He says, pizza? Don't they have a leaning tower made out of this stuff? <laughs> if you can get Albert Tatlock to eat pizza, you can do anything. 
Now mind you, when it comes to open plan living rooms. Oh, well, when I say walls, I don't mean shifting them or anything. I just mean paper and paint. You see, the idea is me and Ken will have this room. Albert can have the front room as a sort of a bed sit, and then Tracy can have his bedroom. Mm, that sounds fine. Yeah, it was Ken's idea, but I think it'll suit. We should be quite cosy. <laughs> And the nice thing is, I'll still be close to my friends. And I can still keep my job on, only part-time, but still. Actually, Alf's pulling a bit of a face because I think the job goes with the flat and vice versa, but I don't think he's that bothered. Well, it seemed happy enough there with Tracy when I popped in. Mm, crimes, I've got to get back. What's the matter? Have I left something on? No, no, I was just thinking I might not say it like this many more times. I shouldn't think it'll change that much. These are the kind of rooms I grew up in. Is it up? I'm waiting. I've sold her five minutes. Where is she? In the backyard. Oh, well, your things aren't out on the street. That's one good thing. Oh, you finally crawled in, have you? I've been wondering. Wondering? <laughs> Making bullets for Eddie to fire. I never said a word. You're all about meals, and half the time they're going cold in the flipping oven. I think I have Stanley's backing in this, Hilda. Is that right, Stanley? Oh, oh you got my backing. Yeah, yeah back you like a jelly, he will. Well, basically, this is my fight. Yeah, it's his fight. Which is not to say that Stanley won't pitch in if he's needed. But you're all right, Stan, you won't be needed. We've called a truce. Are we having grub, then? Yes, you are having grub. But there's rules. And the first rule is hands. What is? Have I been game? Eh, uh, matter of concessions made, matter of cleanliness, a little uh, touch of the health inspections, you know. Right, kitchen under the tap. They're not dirty. Under that tap and be thankful I'm not looking behind your ears. Oh, uh, my ablution's being satisfactory, Mrs. Mm. Oak. May I partake of me victuals? All right, give us a chance. Just wait your hurry. Here. I'm no using your knife on that gravy. Can I mop it up with me bread? Oh, use your manners. Manners maketh man. And as for you, Stanley, I want you straight up them stairs after your dinner. You've got new underwear on the bed. I want that vest you've had on since last Christmas. I've had to wear it, haven't I? You lost the rest on the tip. Yeah, well, you've got new now. Ah, well, new starts itching. No arguments. Who's going to look at your flipping vest? Listen, I've got the house clean. Now I want you clean, right? Does yours test the soap? What's up? Sure to work? Snowed under. I've finished them flashings now. One of these days you must tell me what flashings are. How I can do. No, no, it's all a control. I think the eggs just need about another four minutes. Sit down, read the stuff. Stuff? Yeah, the brochures from the holiday stuff. You've been and got holiday stuff? Yeah, I went to the travel agents, didn't I? Did you now? Well, I thought we could do with a bit of holiday. You might even persuade me to go abroad. Could be just what you need. So that's what I need. Do you want soldiers? That's in there. Can you reach? Come on. Oh, oh, that's a good girl. Now then, give that to your Uncle Albert. Oh, that's clever of you, isn't it? Oh, how many halves of Marge was it for Mrs. Siddall, that and Crescent? Oh, run and tell your mum it was three. What was it? Three. That's right. Right, Albert. Hotels? No, no, but me chain. Oh, no pizza. Hey. Well, they tell me you're a little devil for pizzas. Well, only when folk pitch you. I don't know. Do you know, if you fell in a barrel of muck, you'd come up smelling of roses. You would. What do you mean? Well, all this, a woman's touch, and all the improvements. What do you prove Well, they'll be painting round, won't they? And Look, moving furniture and that. They will come here, and I've told them they are. But as to improvements, it's my house, and there's no improvements unless it suits me. <laughs> Washing, 
from the safety line for the washing. Oh. Oh, Stanley. <coughs> oh, that this infector's got on his sinus. I've had enough, Stanley. Have you seen what she's done to my bedroom? I'm getting out before the polish gets to me brain. You can't miss tea after the row you made about dinner. I've made me point, Stan. Where are you going? Going down the sports and social, aren't I? Well, there's not a snooker down there. Oh, now tonight, I'll give you that. But it's tomorrow night, isn't it? Don't follow you. Well, tomorrow night, stag night. Strippers, belly dances, blue comics, the lot. <laughs> yeah, but if that's on tomorrow night... Yeah, well, it's a new system, you see. If you go tonight when it's usually dead and it's your snooker, you're guaranteed a ticket for tomorrow night, you oh, see. Oh, you're going out tomorrow, are you? It'll be a good night, Stan. Long time since I've had a good night. Well, you're not skint, are you? You'll have a few bevies down the rovers. What's the point if you're on a razzle? The razzle-dazzle is tomorrow night, Stanley. Tonight is just a ticket. Look, eh, uh, be in the rovers just before chucking out time, all right? Hey, Eddie Yates, the stuff is out found under your bed. Eh, uh, see you, Stan. Dessert, eh? Uh... Apple curl stout, bottles, custard creams going... Was that him nipping out? Yeah. Oh, I thought he'd be sat here demanding his tea. There's just me sat here. Right, well, the spuds want feeling, so shift yourself. I've still got the stairs to do. I mean, don't you think the place needs decorating? You won't think about anything drastic. I don't want any fancy wallpaper. Well, you could choose your own. And don't go stripping off good paint. No, no, we're not going to go to those lengths. We just thought we'd brighten the place up a bit, that's all. Well, I don't want no jazzy. I'll tell you what we'd do. We thought of doing it. That wall red, well. that one sky blue pink, take out the fireplace and put in a fish tank. Oh, well, of course, if you're joking. <laughs> we, um, we also thought we might get you a telly. No, oh, we've got a telly. No, one of your own. So that you could sit in the front room and watch what you want to watch. Oh, yeah. The idea being that Tracy could have your bedroom and we could make the parlour into a sort of bed-sitter. Do you mean you, you want me to sleep downstairs? Well, now, the stairs do get harder for you, don't they? Well, that they do, but I'm not shifting. Well, why not, for heaven's sake? Because I think no to sleeping downstairs. Not... And look, if you've got any gumption, you won't ask why. You only want a holiday, then? You know what I want, and none of your dirty answers. What you want is impossible. Now you're talking daft. I'm talking daft. Look, I hate the word, but now that you've brought it up, I, I think Adopting I Adopting should... a baby is not daft. It's very far from daft. I Ask don't care what you people. say. people. Don't mind me. I've asked other people. Asked Emily. You're in the cabin today. And she said... And don't you dare laugh. She said how unfulfilled she felt. How cheated by life not having had kids. There's no comparison. Of course there is. They're a little between us in age. Tell you something else, she said, and all. Well, go on, spit it out. She said she could understand why you were so dead against it because you probably felt you'd fail once as a father with your Stanley. And she's dead right. I wasn't cut out to be a father, was I? Perhaps not then. Wouldn't you like to try again? I'm not all that keen, no. Look, how old was Stanley when Nellie left you? Bit of a kid. Well, you must have regrets. Well, of course I've got regrets. All those things we never did together. Well, if we adopted a little boy. I'd be 60 before he was 10. Not if we adopted an older boy. Hey, cloth. I'm pouring out all over the path, is it? Sounds like an overflow. Where are you? Chapel walks, yeah, well... I'll be right down. Give me about half an hour. E, I'm going to miss you when you leave. You're going to miss me? Well, you'll have to promise me that you'll visit. All right? Hey, stick of some batteries in this, will you? It's gone just when I need it. Oh, uh, you finish doing that while I serve Mr. Furclough. What, an emergency, is it? Yeah, it's an overflow. Sounds like the bolt tapping the coupler. Grand worker, isn't she? I don't know what you're paying her, but you must be worth every penny. Hey, listen, as, uh, has Rita said anything more about this adoption business? Yeah. She's dead serious, I can tell you. You see, if I don't give in, it's going to be dodgy. But if I do, I mean, heaven knows. What's it going to be like when the, the novelty's worn off and we're both stuck with a kid we don't want? Yeah. Rena used to fret a bit about not having children, you know. She never got on what you call a right bad state, though. 
Call it 75p, mate. She's dead set in it, though, I'll tell you. Anyway, better get to me bulk. Uh, see you. Oh, you yeah, made a good job of that. You finished. Shall we start on the umbrella, then? What? What's happened, Marge? Sweeties. I don't know, there's no suiting some folk. He comes moaning cos his dinner's late, you do him a flaming good tea, and then he goes and disappears. I wish it were me. Yeah, well, if he comes in now, you'll just have to take potluck. You know, if you keep on like this, you'll go back to monkeys. Listen, Stanley. The house needed doing, and it's been done from top to bottom, and I want you to start setting an example. Now, Eddie comes in here and sees you sitting round in your muck, using the place like a flipping doss house, and he does the same. Well, in future, I'm having less of it. Now then, I'm going up for my bath, and when I'm all dolled up, you can take me to the Rovers. It'll be nice for once to go in knowing everything's clean on. Hey, Stan. What are you doing back? Where's Hilda? Upstairs. If you want your tea, you have no chance. Oh, you're all right, I've had my tea. Had it in the cafe. Only I was sitting there over me double leg and chips thinking, have you been a true pal, leaving your mucker in the hands of the enemy, so to speak? Ah, oh, you're worse than the Jerry's. Can you be such a thing as to be going out tomorrow night copping great eyefuls of the unclothed female form when your mucker Stanley is in the grip of new underwear? Oh, very funny. Anyway, the upshot is, Stan, if you want a ticket for tomorrow night, I'll get you one. Do you mean it? Yeah, I'll tap up one of the snooker lads, get his ticket. If you've got their eddies. Oh, got the cash, yeah. Oh, what's the use? He never let me go up thing like that. Well, tell her the tale. Look, tell her you're going down the Legion. Look here, uh, you can see me right for the ticket. You tell her the tale and we'll have a belting night out. Here, I hope you're going to be ready. A shave wouldn't do you no harm. I've had one shave this morning. You might try a clean shirt and all. You put them all in the wash, haven't mm -hmm. you? Best place for them in all the state they was in. I'll need a clean shirt for tomorrow night, though. Why is the Queen coming? No, I'm got Legion. Oh, well, if you're going to the Legion, Stanley, there'll be a clean shirt washed and ironed. They were dead at dinner time. It's even deader tonight. I should have brought my knitting. Shall we jump on bar and do a can-can or something? Oh, I can't do a can-can. Can you scream? <laughs> Cheers since I screamed. Right. When I give the word, we'll have a right good scream. Mm. One, two, three. By the way, I bumped into Emily. She wants to know if you're still keen on wedding. What wedding? Charlie and Di's wedding. You'd know that ordinary working class couple from round the corner. He's on social security. Reception at the co-op hall. Ring on the knock. Names down for a council house. Oh, shut up, you damn devil. <laughs> Any road, Emily and Mavis are all set for a basin full of the royal romance. I won't mind two pandas with them. <laughs> He simply refuses to budge. And here we are, all conscience-stricken about leaving him on his own. Oh, don't worry, Uncle Albert can rewrite history just like that. Suddenly, he's doing us a favour, roof over our heads, saving us money. Ought to be grateful. Yeah, but surely you can see how much more convenient it's going to oh, be. Oh, yeah, actually, I think it goes a bit deeper than that, you know, whether it's convenient to him or not. Well, what exactly is his objection? Well, I think he sees moving downstairs. There's one step nearer to, uh, oh, you know... Oh, for I see. Look, uh, I know you don't want Tracy to sleep downstairs, but... She'd be uh, on her own, Ken. If anything happened, I'd, I might not hear. I mean, it's just not natural, is it? It's me upstairs, her on her own in the front room. I, I just couldn't live with that, Ken. Yeah, it's in the cock loft, isn't it? And they haven't got a ladder, so what do I have to do? I have to get a table, put a chair on top of that, put a stool on top of the chair, so I'm standing there with one foot on the stool and one on the architrave, and she's looking up there saying, Mind the wallpaper. Oh, come on, love. You haven't even washed the pots yet. No, oh, I've been studying these. Oh, no, you haven't. You've been sitting there ever since I went out. That must be about an hour ago. And you've been saying to yourself, I'm not going to nag him. I'm not above nagging. I'm not going to nag him, but I'm determined I'm going to adopt a baby and nothing's going to change my mind. Something like that. So this is what we are going to do. You're going to make the arrangements. We'll go and see them. We'll go and have a talk with the adoption people. Together. Come on, give us a smile. Oh, 
It's not papers this morning, is it? Eh? Mavis, skiving, you getting up oh, early. Oh, no, it's not papers. And Mavis doesn't skive. She works very hard. We're very lucky to have her. Oh, aye, she's a little treasure. What's up then, love? Couldn't you sleep? What do you think? Look, I don't want you getting worked up over this. Oh, listen, when you came back and said it was all right with you to make an appointment with the Adoption Society. It's only an interview. I know, but it's a first start, a first real start, the first proper step. Yeah, but I don't want you getting upset and losing your sleep Len, over I'm this. all right, honest. I mean, I'm nervous, excited, scared stiff, yes, all mixed up like that. But, oh, I lay in bed last night thinking about it, thinking about the difference it'll make to us having a kid here, making us a proper family. That's something I never had, you know. Not even when I was a kid. Not even when I was with Harry Bates and Terry. Because deep down in my heart, I always knew that couldn't last. But this'll be different, Len. It'll complete us. It'll fill that space that's always been there. A proper family. That's what we'll be. Well, maybe you're just saying that. Oh, come on, Alf. You know Albert. Once he's made his mind up, why well, the horses won't budge him. You can see his point in a way. I mean, it is his bedroom. He's been there a long time, you know. He can't release the fact of being turfed out. He's not being turfed out. Don't you go all dramatic on me and all. He's stopping put in his own home. He's just been asked to move to another room, that's ah, all. Downstairs. Well, I'm not having Tracy sleeping downstairs on her own. No way. It's absolutely out of the question. Yeah, well, obviously. I mean, I've been worried sick about that at all. Mm -hmm. Hi, Morning. Hello. Any news? What about? Certain somebody changing his mind, seeing a bit of reason. Oh, it's all right. Alf knows the situation. I see. <sighs> Don't go all frosty-faced on me. I've not been blabbing about our problems to everybody who comes in the shop. No, of course she hasn't. <laughs> That's only natural, really, isn't it? Turn to your friends for advice. So, what are we going to do, then? Whatever happens, I'm not having Tracy downstairs on her own. I know. I mean it, Ken. I mean... Well, if he won't change his mind, perhaps we'll have to. Might be better if we leave him as he is and don't move into the house at all. Yesterday, when I was in town, mm. they had one of their makeup demonstrations going on in a store. They were looking mm. for volunteers. Is it free? Well, they did your face up for you. Yeah. And then I suppose they expected you to buy some other stuff. I should have had a go. Sit and have my mask stripped off in public? Not likely. Mm. Mind you, I wouldn't have minded seeing what a professional could do with me. Some of those girls, you know, work miracles. Thank you. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the way you do your face, love. Perhaps you could do with a, a little less of it. <laughs> I'm thinking of going red. Eh? Bright flaming copper. Be a change. Don't you think you're vivid enough as you are? I'll take that as a compliment. Mm. Right, that's me done and dusted. Don't you ever <clears throat> feel like changing your image, Hilda? What image? Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, if you mean like breaking out, yeah, I do. <sighs> Don't we all now and then? Mm. Nay, no, not you, Betty. Why not? Why should it be all the young and beautiful ones that can have a fling? It's those old and ugly ones that need it more. <laughs> Less of the us, if you don't mind. Uh, hey, what would you do? Run naked along the sand with your earth streaming behind in the wind. Oh, oh. that was a daft. Here, I tell you what. Now, Stan's out tonight. He's got a do on at the Legion. Why don't you and me have a night out together, eh, Betty? Oh, I can't tonight, lovey. No, I'm working, you see. Oh, well, another time, then. When's your next night off? Oh, I'm, I'm not very sure, you see. It's, well, it's a little bit complicated, you know, with Fred getting wed and all that, you know. Well, you do still get a night off, though, don't you? Of course she does. Right. Well, you let me know when it is, and you and me will have a girl's night out together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if he can go out with his mates, why can't I? Yeah. <clears throat> You'll enjoy that, won't you, Betty? Girl's night out. You and your mate. <laughs> three quid? I want a free drink as well for that. Listen, this show you're going to see tonight is worth 30 quid, never mind three. That's what you said about the other stag night you conned me into. What was that? That cock up at the row was Fredgy's wedding, you know. Well, that wasn't my fault, was it? That was Fred getting cold feet. Tell you what, she was good, that girl. Well, she would have been, given half the chance. She had all the right equipment. We'll never know now, though, will we? You will tonight, Stanley. Take my word for it, as a scholar and a bin man, every egg a bird, and nothing but nothing will be left to the imagination. You know, you used to be at a fairground darker, shouldn't you? I was. Hey, uh, it's hot stuff. Hot stuff? Aye. 
hot stuff. Stanley, it's so hot, they're having to line the walls with asbestos. Hey. There's a bird there out here. She comes on in like a... Oh, right there. Yeah. Have you two been bolted down to them chairs? You had your bottoms on them when I went out first thing. Some of us have done an hard morning's graph since then. Well, one of us has. Two of us has? And this one's come home hoping for a bit of peace and quiet. Not to find you pair of fat lummoxes still under her feet. Yeah, well, you can have all the peace and quiet you want tonight, Dutch, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, you'll unglue yourselves, ready to go down to the Legion, I dare say. And don't think I don't know what the big attraction is. Hey? No women. Who, by heck, you fellas can't wait to get shut of us, can you? I'll bet if there was women there, you wouldn't be so anxious to go, would you? Huh? <laughs> I mean, can't you see I'm caught in the middle of all this? You are. I reckon I'm the blooming pig in the middle, being shifted about like a blooming parcel. But nobody's shifting you about, Uncle Albert. I wish you wouldn't exaggerate. It's a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Well, I can't see it reasonable. Well, look, you can't expect a young girl to sleep down here on her own. I'm not asking her to. Well, what do you want, then? I mean, come on, tell me, what is it you want? Us to move out, get a place of our own? I thought that was what you didn't want. Now, don't crack on, you're trying to please me. I'm doing my best to please everybody, but I can't blast a well wind, can I? It's you that's disturbing everything. Oh, disturbing, not... I see. Want me to call the wedding off, say goodbye to Deirdre, maintain the status quo. Is that what you want? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Stop being childish. Childish? Me? Uncle Albert, believe me, heaven help me, I'm trying to be patient and do my best for everybody, and you are making it impossible. Don't raise your voice to me. Eh, sorry, I did knock. Um, uh, all right. You said if he, if I had an hour to spare, yeah. you know, do a bit more digging on the allotments. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, well, gotta get back to work anyway. We'll talk about this tonight. As you wish. Had a bit of a barney then, have you? Well, not to do with you. No need to be embarrassed in front of me. I'm not. I mean, I live with this every day, you know. A barney is a eh, keeps the doctor away. That's the Oggy's motto. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't welcome him. No. No. Arguments? Well, yes, that's one thing. But rowing? No. And particularly when it's someone who's supposed to be close to you. Yeah. Over the wedding, was he? He wanted me to sleep downstairs. I'm not with you. Well, turn the front parlour into a bed sitting room for me. That's what I said after, smarming me all over. And Tracy's having my room. So what's wrong with that? Because it's my room and I'm used to it. And besides, I... Oh, I see. You think it shows you're getting on? I am getting on. There's no use denying it. But I'm not a flaming invalid. I'm not bedridden. Yeah, but that's not why they're doing it, is it? But that's what they do do to old folks. What did you use Norman Fox? Brought his bed downstairs because his legs wouldn't carry him up. Well, mine will. Oh, you're a stubborn old goat, Albert. Look, we all know you're still frisky. You've got nothing to prove. Nobody's going to say they put him downstairs because he's past it. They'll know why you went downstairs and they'll admire you for it. Admire me? How do you make that out? Giving up your room for a little girl. I mean, she can't sleep downstairs on her own, but a grown man can, can't he? Oh, well, uh... Must admit, I'm not scared of being on my own. Well, there you are, then. You can have it all nice and comfy, your own little ground floor bachelor pad. <laughs> I would have a bit more privacy. And the room is bigger than mine, any road. So, what's wrong with that, then? I'll tell you what, you can have your own little cocktail bar in there, get all the Judy's round, you'll have Mike Baldwin green with envy. <laughs> you know, you don't only shift rubbish, you talk plenty of it as well. Do you want this digging doing, or don't you? Aye. Hey, how do I look? Well, you certainly don't look as if you've lost a night's sleep. No, I mean, I've had too much makeup on. I've hardly put any eyeshadow on, and I've only put my scar on, because if I don't, my eyelash should disappear. You look fine. Stop worrying. It's important. If I waltz in there with a low-cut frock on, plastered in gunge, they're not going to think I'm very suitable, are they? Well, you're not, are you? You look very suitable to me. I'd have you for my mother any day of the week. I've been your flipping mother since the day I married you. Listen, you think I should tell him about Harry Bates? Well, what on earth for? It's past history, that, isn't it? I mean, what interest would that be to them? Well, I did bring Terry up for a few years, didn't I? It would show I had experience that I wasn't totally clueless. Yeah, but what could you tell them about you and Harry? That we lived together, you mean? Well, that wouldn't look so good, would it? I could say we were married. Wasn't well, that Terry was your real kid? Oh, no, you can't go bending the truth. You'd never know when to stop, would you? And if they found out, they've got ways of checking up, you know. If they found out that you'd been 
I don't know, tell them a pack of lies. Right, that will put the tin lid on it, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, you're right. I wasn't really serious. I just want everything to be right. I know you do, though. So? We just have to take our chances. And hope that they accept us. For the honest, hard-working people that we are, and lovely with it. Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks, love. What for? For being lovely? Oh, I can't take any credit for that. I was born that way. No. For doing this for me. For seeing things my way. I mean, it can't have been easy for you. It wouldn't have been very easy if I hadn't, though, would it? Is that why you did it? For a bit of peace and quiet? I did it because you wanted it. Is that good enough? That's good enough. Right. You ready? Chin up. Mother. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Furtle are here to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do sit down. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Isn't it a lovely day? I think June's my favourite month. Yes, but it's nice to get any summer frocks again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course, it can change again overnight. British weather. Now. Would you like to tell me something about yourselves? How do you mean? Where we live or what? We'll come to the practicalities later. First, I'd like to know about why you feel you want to adopt a child at this particular stage in your marriage. Because we haven't got any of our own. We got married late in life, you see, to start a family. You don't feel it's too late to take a child into your home? Oh, no, that's different. It's a bit different from having a baby, isn't it? Giving a good home to a child that's already growing up. Well, we don't want too old. We weren't thinking of a, a teenager around like oh, that. Oh, no, uh, you know, we thought a child of about five or six. <laughs> what do you think the chances are? We've got a lovely little house. It'd have its own room and everything like that. Uh, as I said before, at this stage, we're not really discussing material things. No, but they are important, aren't they? I mean, you'd want to know that it was well cared for and clothed and fed, and, well, we can assure you on that score. We're not well off. We do all right. The kid wouldn't go without. Yes, I see. Excuse me a second. Mrs. Ramsden? Well, I'm glad I've caught you both together, because I, I wanted to ask you if you have any ideas what you'd like for a wedding present. Mm, yes, there is one thing we'd like, but I doubt if you could get it for us. Oh, what is it? An extra room building upstairs. Albert's giving him problems. Oh, dear. Still, I suppose it's only to be expected. He's always been somewhat opposed to change. Somewhat opposed? If it had been up to my Uncle Albert, we'd still be walking around in woes. <laughs> hey, are you chaps in the shopping? Uh, well, a bit of both. Oh, well, you can get me some cheddar cheese in for a start. Right. Oh, and we want some mustard. We've run out. I'm just going down to my allotment with Eddie Yates, and I shall fancy a Welsh rabbit when I get back. OK. And don't go buying any costly wallpaper without consulting me. Wallpaper? Aye. Oh, and well, I remember, I'm not sitting into that parlour as it is now. It's all right as a front parlour, but it's no use as a bed sitter. Oh, and we shall want some new curtains as well, because they're letting too much light in. And don't forget the mustard, because Welsh rabbit's no good without mustard. I thought you said he was being difficult. Forgive me, I have to say this. I don't think you've considered this quite as fully as you should. Good heavens, of course we have. You don't think we've gone into this lightly, do you? If you adopt a child of what did you suggest? Five or six years old. Yes. Have you stopped to consider how old you would be when that child is a teenager? We have discussed that. And in ten years' time, we won't be exactly senile, you know. <laughs> Maybe not. But it takes an awful lot of energy and patience to deal with an adolescent. It's a difficult age, at the best of times, for any parents. Well, I suppose it wasn't five or six, suppose it was a bit older, you know, like uh, ten or eleven. There'd still be problems. You sound as if you're doing your best to put us off. There is another possibility, of course. What's that? Have you considered fostering? That would be much easier to arrange. No. No, we don't want someone for a short time and then have to say goodbye. We want a child that's our own so we can watch him grow up 
and be part of our family permanently. In that case, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. Mrs. Ramsden, we're honest, hard-working, respectable people. My husband used to be a local councillor. Well, we may not be kids, but we're, we're reasonably fit and well. We want a child so we can give it love and a good home. Isn't that enough, Mrs. Ramsden? I mean, good heavens, what more do you want? I'm really very sorry, but the answer has to be no. At least as far as this particular society is concerned. Well, why, for heaven's sake? I mean, are we good enough? What's wrong with us? Nothing at all, Mr. Fairclough. As foster parents, you'd be perfectly acceptable. As adoptive parents, it is, to put it bluntly, simply a question of age. We're too old. Is that it? Even if you were ten years younger, you'd still be too old. The rules are made for the good of all concerned, believe me. Rules. Bloody red tape. I would have thought it was intentions that count, not figures. Come on, love. We're doing no good here. I'd like to see you go to all this trouble to take me out. I'd like to see you take me out. We will, Duchess. As soon as the opportunity arises, won't we, Stan? Give it a real good night out. Of course we will. Well, can I have that in writing? My word is me bond. Oh, I don't doubt it, Eddie. Mm. As soon as a suitable opportunity arises. Yeah, well, I dare say that'll be like when, uh -huh. uh, when Stockport County win the FA Cup. Hey, that's very good, that, Hilda. Didn't know you were a follower of sport. Well, I have picked up one or two bits of information living with you two. I mean, apart from grub and supping, it's your only topic of conversation. Talking about grub, are we having some before we go? No, you're not. They always put on big off-pot suppers at these do's. Do they? Well, last time you went to the Legion, you told me they did. Oh, aye. You come back busting on that occasion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not to mention staggering, in and out of bed like a flipping yo-yo all night. Yeah, don't you worry, Hilda, he's in my capable hands. Yeah, well, he'd better be, cos I'm only letting him go on that condition. Right, let's have a look at you. Hmm. Do you want to look behind me ears? No, Tar. All right, you'll do. And think on. I want you coming back as smart as when you went out. I'm not spending all tomorrow morning sponging stains off. Right, you're ready. Just about. Well, enjoy yourselves. Oh, I'll leave you a bit of supper, just in case they're not as generous with the hot pot as last time. You're a good woman, Hilda. Ooh, I'm a daft woman. I don't know if that's the same thing. Go on, get off with Hello. you. Hello. And, hey, don't get into no mischief. <clears throat> the last run, um, which you made in 1971 with George Scott, is rated by at least one critic uh, as your best film. Would you agree with that judgment? Still... Perhaps it might be better to get married and installed before Uncle Albert changes his mind. Oh, I don't think he will. But yeah, sure, by all means, let's fix the date. Have you, um, have you thought any more about what I said about a church wedding? You're really keen on that, aren't you? Well, I'd like one, Ken. I didn't have one when I married Ray, and well, I'd just like this time to be different, you know. And I also think it'd mean more to Tracy. You know, she's... Never been a bridesmaid, so I think it'd have more significance to her little mind in a church. I think the same applies to Adon. Mm. Mind you, if it's Africa at St. Mary's, he might say no. Oh, I doubt it. They're much more tolerant now. And you were the innocent party in the divorce. I don't know. You know he wouldn't christen Tracy because we got married in a register office. Oh, no, that was the old one. They've got a new one now. Oh, have they? Since when? Oh, about the beginning of last year. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> Shows you what even you marry and how often I go. <laughs> right, so I'll fix up for us to go and see him then, mm. shall I? You'll have to um, give him some idea of what day you're planning on. Uh, tomorrow? Is that you trying to show me how mad, passionate and impetuous you can be? I am mad, passionate and impetuous. I just hide it under a very good front. Mm. <laughs> no, seriously, love. Have you got a date in mind? Well, how would the last Saturday in July sound? That sounds fine. Then that's what I'll tell the man. And don't forget to order the sunshine. The sunshine, church bells, choir, and all the trimmings. Will that do for madame? That will do for madame very nicely. I'm not going to say it again. I know how disappointed you are. 
but I did warn him. Now, aren't you glad you're right? Oh, for God's sake, that's not fair! Is that why you went along with this? Because you knew we hadn't a cat in Elle's chance? For God's sake, you're too old! You made me feel like any charcoal to somebody. I'm not too flaming old! But I'm just as disappointed as you are. No, you're not. No, I'm not going to flame and argue with you. Not in this mood. Where are you going? I'm going to the pub. You can come at all if you like. No, thanks. And you'd be better occupied sitting here and discussing what we're going to do next. Discussing it? We've talked about nothing else since you came back. Well, there's dozens of our those societies. Somebody said there's over a hundred. They won't all have the same daft rules, you know. It can go on for years. Well, I'm not giving up. Not so soon. Look, love, I know how hurt you were today. Building up all your hopes like that and having them all knocked down again. How many times do you think I can see that happen to you? It might not happen next time. God, you will never listen, will you? You get something into your head and nothing else shift it. Nobody, but nobody is going to let us adopt a baby. There might be a million other societies, but they all work to the same guidelines. If the woman is over 35 and the fella's over 40, you are too old. We're way past that. Face it, love. I'm sorry, but you've got to face it. Nobody could have made it plainer than she did today. Well, I'm not giving up. She's not God. All right. All right, then go on, have it your own way. But next time, you go on your tub. You might be able to face that little lot again. But I can't. Thought you two were going for a run out. Yeah, we were going to, and then we started discussing arrangements and it got too late. Okay, Albert, what are you having? Well, you'll have to make it nip it. Ours are just going on. Well, when he just come in. That is not my problem. You should have tore yourselves away from each other a bit sooner, shouldn't you? Yeah. Rum? Right. Rum. Right. Uncle Albert. What? I'd just like to say thank you. What for? For being so helpful about the house. In fact, I'm going to give you a kiss. Oh, don't be so soppy. <laughs> Look, we've time for another one. My shout. All right? Uh, why not? Come on, us barmaids. They've got homes to go to and all, you know. Mind you, I mean, tonight's not been as bad as some with Eddie and Stan, miss. It's, it's been a little holiday, isn't it? Well, where are they? That old respected senior citizen is what they call the $64,000 question. Oh. I think I'll take a bath. Oh, don't break the habits of a lifetime, Stan. Just get out of bed, get some clothes on, and get down here. I want a word with you. But can't I... Get down here! Hey, come on. Worst things have happened at sea. Why are we too old, then? It's youngsters that can't bring children up properly. Kids who get married while they're still at school and have a family before they're 20. They're the ones that make a mess of it. But the older you get, the more experiences you get, the better chance you have of bringing them up like they should be. We could love a child. Couldn't we, Len? We could love a child, even at our age. Of course we could, love. Well, why, then? I don't know. I mean, there must be other reasons, obviously. But they know things, you know. They know what they're doing, these adoption societies. I mean, if they say we're too old... Uh... I mean, they, they know things. They know that you, you get set in your ways. I know that's your excuse. I've never denied it, love. No, I know. Is there any more tea? You don't think it's worth going on, then? I mean, you heard what she said, that woman. Other adoption societies might have different ideas. Oh, love, haven't you had enough stuffing knocked out of you? They all seem more or less the same, you know, these people. And let's face it, we are knocking on a bit. But we're not too old to enjoy ourselves. 
Where do you want to go on this holiday of ours? I haven't thought. Well, think, woman. Think. me breakfast. You know him what's some for his supper? Well, you can do the same for your breakfast. Now then, three o'clock in the morning, let's start with that one. Where were you? I, well, I would have told you last night. It wasn't last night, Stanley, it was this morning. You fell into bed, pulled all the clothes off me and started snoring the minute you'd edit the pillar. Yeah, well, I would have told you last night if you'd been awake, but you see, you dropped off. Not because of an easy mind, Stanley. Because of the two bottles of stout I'd drunk, waiting for my loving husband to come home. If you had been awake, I'd have told you, but, but you were asleep. Yeah, well, I'm not asleep now. I'm wide-eyed and waiting, so come on, let's be having you. Where were you till three o'clock this morning? At the Legion, with Eddie, like I told you. Till three o'clock? I was sewing on. What? Yes, I, the, the, the snooker, a tournament, you see. So we had to stay to the end, so you'd won, didn't we? <laughs> Oh, hello, Wilder. I thought you'd be down the Rovers. I bet you did, but I'm not, am I? Yeah, well, I won't interrupt you. Come here, you. I come down after you this morning, but you'd sloped off. Yeah, well, I was on early turn. Why, heck, you were. Do you know what time it was when you landed home? Getting on a bit. Three o'clock. Like I was telling Shut you. Shut up, you. What's your story? Well, you know how it is when you're enjoying yourselves. It, it, playing a bit of snooker. Playing? And watching. Yeah, the tournament, you know. Yeah, the tournament. Are you telling me that you was watching a load of daft diapers playing snooker till three o'clock in the morning? Well, it drags on a bit. You know what it's like when you've got a couple of dead legs in the final, like uh, Tommy Frost and Billy Leggett. It was Tommy and Billy, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're not exactly Urukin Higgins. It took them forever to pot the black. They'd already spent 20 minutes on the pink. 20 minutes. Anyway, we had a good time, didn't we, Stan? I mean, Stan picked the winner. Won a couple of quid, didn't you, Stan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, did you? A couple of quid. Huh? Right, I'll have one of them. Hey? I said I'll have one of them. You? You daft devil. What do you want to say that for? Money well spent, Stan. It was that little touch of genius that just clinched it for us. How about last night, eh? Aye. <laughs> it was great. Great! <laughs> that, that belly dancer, didn't I promise you something spectacular? Have you ever seen a belly like that, eh? No. <laughs> there. Now. Hey, hold your tummy in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think of Robert Mitchum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, important though appearances may be, I strongly advise you to concentrate on the spoken word and don't, for heaven's sake, say anything silly. We wouldn't dream of it, Mrs. Walker. You see, this isn't one of those giant corporations that don't care what the stuff are doing and just want the profits to roll in. Newton and Ridley are an old established family brewery and they have always kept the very highest morals. Well, that's fairly obvious, Mrs. Walker. Indeed it is. You see, some people may laugh at their house rules. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. They've managed to survive all the takeover bids and they have continued to thrive. Hey, I like that, Mrs. Walker. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll say that to them if you don't mind. <laughs> Why not? I want to wish I could be there myself. Now, I'm sure you've said everything that needs saying in that letter, Mrs. Walker. Yes. Everything. There you are. And keep it safe. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure you know it's only a formality. From what Mr. Cresswell said to me, and we're very old friends, there is no earthly reason why you shouldn't have a house of your own. Well, he said the same thing to you. Yeah, and it's very heartening to know that he reported that to you, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> now, look, look, have you got the, uh, the marriage certificate? Yes, dear, stop my drink. <laughs> well, I think it's time to have a drink. Oh, drop of the old Dutch courage, eh, Mrs. Walker? Well, I was thinking of coffee, actually. It wouldn't do for you to go to the brewery smelling of alcohol. Oh. I wouldn't, do you reckon? No, Mrs. Walker's got a point. Good jobs don't grow on trees, and we wouldn't want anything to go wrong now, would we? No. Oh, well, thanks, love. Nothing there? No, not this week. Ah, oh, well, don't worry. Someone will turn up, won't it? 
Hello, Elsie, love. Hi. Long time no see. A long time no be back. How are you? Oh, not so bad, all right. How are things on the job front? Oh, well, I'm still looking, haven't I? Oh, that makes two of us. See, see you, Hello. Um, could I have me fast, please? Yeah, love? the usual. Uh, uh, no, the small ones, please. Uh, no, the, the, yes, that's right. 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 Thank you. There we are. Anything exciting been happening around here while I've been away? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, I've had a bit of a cold. Well, it wasn't so much a cold. I think it was more of an allergy. Mm. I had this right stuffy nose and I was sneezing and that, but no, otherwise nothing. <laughs> How are things with you? Fine, except for no money and no job. Still, it's nice to be back home again. That counts for something. Yes, it does. Yes, it's nice to be back in your own midden, even if it is a midden. <laughs> uh, anything been happening next door? Well, I don't know exactly. One lady came, but she didn't last long. And Rita said that Mrs. Sedgwick's been working there the last few days. Mrs. Sedgwick, his wife? Mm. Things must be bad. Mm, perhaps they'll want you back. Mm. Well, they can want. I'm enjoying my freedom while it lasts. See you. Bye. Of course we got out. I was a member of the Brains Trust, wasn't I? Oh, what? The Brains Trust. There were four of us. We used to do quizzes with other nicks, you know. It was uh, your... Durham, strange ways. We weren't rubbish, you know. You, on a brain's trust, you're joking. So I look as if I'm joking. Sure, you never look out else to me. I can't take that face seriously. You know, I sometimes wonder why I bother coming in here. Well, you must admit, you get an eye class of insult and the beer's not bad and the view... I'll take three postcards side and a blow for over my bed. <laughs> Who's your friend? So you know Ernie Sadler, steward of the Legion. Boom! Hey, come here, you. Now what have I done? Listen, Stan Ogden and his missus are coming in here. Well, there's room for them. Yeah, I know, but if his missus asks any questions... We were in there, in the Legion, last night, right till three o'clock, watching a snooking tournament, right? Right. Have you got it? Three o'clock? Eddie, me boy. Not a week passes by, but half a dozen other lads come the same trick. I'm used to it. Oh, right, as long as you don't forget. I won't forget. Now, satisfy my curiosity. Do they sell beer here? Oh, aye, right. what are you having? Oh, now then, Chuck, uh, have you got everything? Yeah. Stop mithering. Oh, he is a mitherer. Well, I hope he's a successful one. Now, the very best of luck to both of you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Walker. Thank you, Mrs. Walker, for all your help. That's quite all right, as long as you don't let me down. Hey, Fred, you won't forget your mates when you uh, own the brewery, will you? Forget you any time, Ragged. Hey, good luck, mate. All the best. God bless, pal. Hey, was that Fred G? He used to live in Omdurman Street. Yeah, he works here. He's uh, off to the brewery trying to get a pub of his own, you know. He must be mad. <laughs> yeah, where's the gents? It's uh, over by the town pool, there. Good lad, ain't he? Because without saying, he's a friend of yours. I'm very lucky to be one, I know. Here's if you pay for his pint. I was just getting it. <clears throat> oh, hey, Stan. <laughs> Any saddlers in. Hey, fear not, I've primed him. Do you mean? I mean... Don't worry. When you've got an oppo like me, you're in safe hands. Hey, have we come in here for a chin wag or what? Oh, get them in, Chuck, will you? I've left me money in me other pants. What other pants? What did you tell him? I told him if Hilda asks any questions, we haven't been there legion for weeks. You are. Right. <laughs> oh, have a little faith, Stanley. Just a little faith, that's all. <laughs> Hello there, Stanley. Great night last night, oh, eh? Yeah, great, great, <laughs> great. Best snooker tournament we've had for years, yeah. eh? Yeah, keep it going, eh? <laughs> that very legged like played a blinder, didn't he? Did he not? Did he not? Ah. And how's the lovely Frieda? Who? The lovely Frieda. Who's Frieda? Your wife, you bird. Hilda, not Frieda. Why, Hilda? <laughs> I've got Frieda on the brain, so would you if you saw her. Well, where is the missus then here? I haven't beat him, beat him my brains out for nothing, have I? Over there, talking to the barmaid. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, keep smiling, lad. We can't all be lucky. <laughs> right, double eight. Oh, oh, hey! hey, hey. What's wrong right. with you, then? Here, yeah, Ben, will you give me a dope test on this fella? Easy, was it? Now to be. I wouldn't mind. I only gave him a game out of the kindness of my heart. There, I said, he's a worried man. He needs a smiling face. Well, you know what they say, every cloud's got a silver lining. It's always darkest before the dawn. It's no mystery, mate. I had a bit of a problem on my shoulder. Now I haven't. Get him up again, Ben. Well, if you like the sun, you like Malta. It gets very hot. Which is more than what I can get over this holiday. It's the adoption people, isn't it? Not much fun finding out you're too old to bring up a child, is it? Life really is full of ironies. 
Here's you longing for a child to look after, and Gladys Turnbull's daughter can't wait to get rid of hers, and it's not even born yet. Who's Gladys Turnbull? Oh, you know her. She's an auxiliary at Weatherfield General. Lives on Bland Street. She was terribly upset. Daughter got into trouble, and the boy just vanished, and now the girl doesn't even want to see the baby when it arrives. <laughs> what a funny world it is. <laughs> Looking fellow, Fred G, you know, a pub of his own, isn't he? That's what we could do with. What's up? Never you mind. There's certain things that can't be discussed in public. What thing? I don't suppose you were thinking of working this afternoon. The wheels off me car. What thing? Right. Well, I'm off to the library. I'll see you when I get home. What about? When I tell you, you'll know, won't you? Doghouse again, stand by, heck, you spent some time in there. You know, I could do with women if they weren't so flipping two-faced. I'm uh, John Ridley. Do sit down. Very famous name, sir. Uh, one of the co-founders was my great-grandfather. Oh, very nice. Uh, we were thinking, perhaps, we might be seeing Mr. Creswell. Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Creswell concerns himself with far uh, weightier things. Oh. I'm looking after personnel now, so you'll just have to make do with me. I'm delighted. Now... You've been at the Rover's Return for some considerable time now, so there can't be much I can tell you about running a Newton and Ridley's house. I take it uh, Mrs. Walker opened up the books, as it were, showed you a few tricks of the trade? Oh, yeah, she's been very helpful. She let me have a go at most things, ordering accounts and that, you know. And you want to stay with Newton and Ridley? Oh, yes, very much. Any particular reason? Uh, well, um... Uh, do you remember what you were saying this morning about how they'd survived all takeover bids and continued to thrive. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I said that, yeah. Very gratifying to hear you say so. We're rather proud of our independence. Now, first things first, did you bring the marriage certificate? Yes, and the reference from Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Yes. Yes, now, tell me, Mr. G, why do you think you'd make a good manager? Well, I mean, there was nothing you could put your finger on exactly. She was just different. You know that sort of overblown quality? Well, that wasn't there anymore. I mean, she was cheerful enough, but you know what I mean? Eh? Well, there was just this subtle difference in her. Oh! Oh, Elsie Tanner, who do you think I've been talking about for the last five oh, minutes? Oh, I... Well, in spite of what you think, Riley, I do have other thoughts in my head. And in spite of what you think, Fairclough, I'm well aware of it. Then there's the eagle and child. Do you know George Rothwell? Oh, yeah, a thin-faced fella. Yeah, it's bronchitic, I'm afraid. I don't no. think he'll stay long. He's been making noises for some while. Daughter down south. So, that makes four or possibly five vacancies within the foreseeable future. Well, all I can say, Mr Ridley, is that, uh, well, if you were to choose us, we won't let you down. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned my good lady here. She's very experienced herself in the licence trade, you know. Oh, really? Uh, who is? Newton and Ridley, of oh, course. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's a family team. Well, that seems to cover everything, I think. Um, I'll take a copy of the uh, marriage certificate, send it down to my clerk, and we'll post it on, if that's all right. And it shouldn't be long before I'm in touch again with what I certainly hope will be uh, good news. I'm just going to do it. What? I, I, I don't know. Sit down, Stanley. Hey. Can't you hear a single word I say? I said sit down. Who did that this morning? Ah, well, we're doing it again this afternoon. Because things keep changing, don't they? Little pieces keep falling into the jigsaw puzzle. Like, who's the lovely Frida? Hey. You're doing it again, Stanley. I said, who's the lovely Frida? Who's Frida? Oh, by the egg. Has nobody ever told you if you want to be a good lie, you've got to have a good memory? Your mate in the Rovers at dinner time. Now, did he or did he not say, how's the lovely Frida? And did you or did you not drag him out of arm's way before he could open his trap a bit wider? Oh, well, he couldn't think of your name, you see. What he meant to say was, how's the lovely Hilda? Oh, aye. And where did he get the lovely bit from, then? Oh, well, in the later few weeks ago, we were talking about our wives, you know, and we were <laughs> coming to it, you know. Oh, you do have a lovely way with words, Stanley. Yeah. Oh, hello, 
you back. I thought I heard you moving about. Oh, did you, Elder? I thought you might be listening. Had a nice time, did you? Oh, yes. It's uh, very nice to get away from this and that and the other. Still, it's nice to get home in spite of all its faults. Yes, <laughs> well, we can't have everything, can we? Well, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, me mop bucket, please. Uh, you know, the one I lent you before I went away. Could I have it back for a couple of days if it's no trouble? Mop bucket? Yes, the one I lent you before I went away. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I haven't made a list, but I don't think I've got enough paper in the house for that. Stanley, see if you can find Elsie's mop bucket. You uh, got over your trouble, have you? Oh, oh, yeah. Has it got a handle? Yeah, and a sort of sieve thing for squashing the mop in. There you are. That's the fella. Oh, thank you very much. Be seeing you. There's no gratitude, is there? Do you know, I gave her a couple of blouses and a jumper before she left. Well, she hasn't got much else, has she? No. I suppose you're better than nothing. Hey, did you, uh, did you really tell your pals I was lovely? Even if you were coming it a bit? Of course I did. Well, you are, aren't you? Don't suppose there's any point in asking where you're going. No, love, there isn't. So, I hope you don't mind, Mrs. Walker. I mean, we went for a bite to eat and then I wandered around the shops. I think she deserved it. She was smashing. You weren't so bad yourself. <laughs> well, we made a good impression, Mrs. Walker. Very fair. I'm very pleased for you both. Now, I suggest you go and get another bite to eat, change out of refinery, come back here and give us a hand, all right? Right, OK. <laughs> Won't be long before we have threading competition, then. Apparently not. Should do wonders for our trade, that. Now, bet. Ridley? Yes, George? Which certificate? Yeah, that's that one, yes. Well, uh, just take an extract and send it back to Mr. G. Noticed what? Eunice Nuttall, who's that? Oh, Mrs. G. No, I didn't notice. Why? Well, she said she'd worked for us at some time, but she didn't say which house. Why? Really? Yeah. Now, that is interesting. Yes. <laughs> no, Beth. I'm not as pessimistic as you are. I think Fred could make quite a good licensee. He has all the right qualities. Doesn't trust nobody? Good at chucking folk out. Uh, can I have three light bottles to take out, please? You can, Hilda, love. You can. But what do you do with your time? I mean, that's what it get me now. Well, it's not easy. Take this afternoon, you say. I went to the Legion, didn't I? Game of crib light. Mind you, I suppose it's better than walking the streets, isn't it? The Legion? In an afternoon? That must be like a morgue. Are you joking? It's packed out, isn't it? Well, they've got this new barmaid there, you know, now. Frida. Ooh. I tell you, she's only been there two weeks. She's got all her fellas sorted out already. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, did you say Frida? Uh, yeah, love. At the Legion? Yeah. The bottles, Elder. Uh, what's she like, Miss um, Frida? Well, um, touchy Dolly Partons, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, sounds interesting, yeah. Larry. And you talked her down? I must have done. She's gone by three bottles for her tea. I'll tell you what, Stan, you're improving. Mind you, there was plenty of room for it. I was at Ernie's saddle, the daft devil. How's the lovely Frida in front of the old flaming pub? Who is this flaming Frida when she's at home? I'm blowed if I know. He, he meant Hilda, but he forgot the name, you know. And you know what she's like. Well, I'll tell you what, she's a jewel if she's got that beer. Aye. Right. And she's got the beer. Sit down, Stanley. Oh, flaming eh? And you. What's up? You know that jigsaw I was on about? Well, I've finished it. Now, where were you last night? We told you, the Legion. At the Legion. And you don't know the lovely Frieda who's been serving on there for the past two weeks? That's what's kept you out till three o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Taking over from 19 Inkerman Street, has she? He was with me. Oh, aye, and pigs are flying all over the co-op. I don't know any flaming Frieda. We haven't been the Legion for weeks. You what? Oh, we'll come clean, Hilda. We went to the social club last night. You brass-faced monkey, do you think I was born yesterday? You was at the Legion. You've been telling me so every five minutes, and that mate of yours was shouting the odds all over the pub. 
I don't know what game you were playing with Beda Fancy Pants, but it certainly wasn't snooker. I knew there was someone brewing the minute you changed your vest. Oh, Hilda. Never mind, oh, Hilda. I'll get to the bottom of this if it takes me the rest of my life. Will you be reasonable? Get off. Oh, I'm having them. Hello, love. Hello, love. I couldn't wait. I won't be long with your tea. No, there's no worry. Then, you'll never guess what I've done. Go on, surprise me. Well, I've been to Bland Street. There's a girl there, Sandra Turnbull, and she's got herself in trouble. And she's going to have this baby in September, only she doesn't want it. So I told her that we'd have it. I told her that we'd go around later tonight, both of us, and talk to her about it. I told a newborn her... baby? Mm. Boss! A newborn baby. Well, it's better this way. See, this way we avoid all that. You must be stark, raving, flaming mad. I don't know what you're bothering for, love. It's been missing for months. I don't care whether it has or not. Look, do you want this sewing on your arm or on your sleeve? It's a waste of time, isn't it, though, isn't it? I always keep them unfastened when I'm working. Look, I don't want my husband wandering around with his sleeves flapping like a scarecrow. Right, there you are. And next time you notice one's missing, let me know. Well, no news from the brewery, I'm afraid. In fact, there's nothing at all for you this morning. Uh, no, no. I can't understand what's keeping them so long. If you don't hear something by tomorrow, I'd be inclined to give them a ring. Uh, yes, we, uh, we might just do that, eh, uh, uh, Eunice? Yes, yeah, we, we might. Just... might. When you're ready, Fred, I'd like to look round the cellar with you. Right, Mrs Walker. What are we going to do? We can't go on like this. Look, she'll have to be told. Listen, we said we'd say nothing till I'd had a word with the brewery. I know, love. There's no point in putting the cat among the pigeons until, well, until we know something definite, is there, love? Oh, that letter was definite enough to me, Fred. I mean, how can we be unsuitable after all they've said? They've been promising me a pub for, well, for years. And there's what they said at the interview. Well, how, how would have laid odds on we'd have, we'd have been in a pub of our own within a month? So would I. That's what I don't understand. Nor do I, love. But I'm going to find out, I promise you that. Look, I've got to dash. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a ring at dinner and see if you've heard anything, eh? No, no, don't, don't do that. We might, uh, we, we might be overheard, like. I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll nip out and meet you. Well, you'll be busy here, won't you? I'll think of some Um Look, I'll tell you what, love. I'll meet you in Jim's cafe at uh, half twelve. How's that? Well, if you say so. I do. Charlie. Is that you, Ken? And who were you expecting? Oh, I don't care as long as you've got a paint scraper in the hand, are you? <laughs> what have you been doing with yourself all morning? Thought you'd have finished this lot by now. Do you want a bucket of water over your head? Because you're going the right way about it. You know, I reckon that lot might well have been on there since a year dot. Oh, you're not kidding. Anyway, standing gawping at it's not going to get it done, is it? Tell you what, I'll put the kettle on, make us a cup while you get changed. Soon get it shifted once we both get stuck in. Uh, sorry, love, I'm afraid you're going to have a soldier on on your own for a bit longer. I thought you were taking the rest of the day off. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's been a bit of a panic. I've got to get down to the town hall. I'll be back at dinner time, I promise you. Mmm, I believe that when I see it. I know what these meetings are like. Anyway, you've got time for a brew before you go on, yeah? Mm, I think I could manage that, yeah. Uh, I thought I'd pop in at St Mary's while I'm down there, you know, fix up the wedding. What's he like, this new vicar? Don't know, don't know much about him. Oh, I just hope he's not like the Reverend Hope. I mean, if he wouldn't christen Tracy because me and Ray were married in a register office, there's not much chance of him marrying a divorced woman now, is there? No, well, he's certainly not another Reverend Hope. He's 20 years younger for start with, so uh, he should have a little more modern outlook, I think. Well, I hope so. You just leave it to Uncle Ken. You want to get married in church, you shall get married in church. Mm. Um, providing you finish this place first. <laughs> Did you manage to ring social services? I've done better than that. I called in to see them. Oh, what did he say? They're sending somebody round. Round here? Yeah, why? You're not going out, are you? When? Well, they didn't say exactly, sort of 3, 3.30. Today? Yeah. Well, he wanted me to get something moving, didn't well, he? you might have flipping warned me. I have done it just. Hey, come on now. What are you doing? I'm shifting this lock. Now. I am going to make a start on this room and you are going to help me. Now, shift all that lot away and then clear them pots because I'm not having any social worker walking in here thinking we live like pigs, even if one of us does. So, you do the pots while I start upstairs. How about a cup of coffee first, then? Pots! 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you, love. I mean, you don't have to be an octopus to work here, but it does help. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you were a bit pushed, love. A bit pushed? I couldn't go any faster if I was on roller skates. Well, it's up here on your own or what? Well, till half past three this afternoon I am. I can't get help, can I? What, are you joking? With all these kids out to work? Come on, they snap your hands off. Oh, why? They do, till they find out they've got to work for a living. Do you know, I thought there was supposed to be an unemployment problem. You could have fooled me. There's no supposed to be about it, love. The flaming well is. I happen to be part of it, don't I? Oh, I see. Well, no offence, man. I mean, well, not to you and your sort, any road. I mean, you know what work's all about. I can see that. No, it's them kids I'm on about. Scared to get of chipping the nail varnish off of them. And I'm sure they think that if they're on their feet for longer than five minutes, their legs will drop off. Well, they're not all like that, look. Oh, the ones <laughs> I seem to get landed with are... Well, I'm telling you, they're not. As a matter of fact, my daughter-in-law used to work here, didn't she? Here, yeah, she doesn't fancy coming back, Josh. I mean, part-time, I do. No, Tyler. She's got her hands full at the moment. She left to have a baby. <laughs> oh, well, between you and me, she's well out of it. Oh, I only wish I were. I mean, what kind of life's this for the boss's wife? I should be on a beach somewhere, tanning myself the colour of a cornflake, not spending the best years of my life up to me elbows in chip oil. Enjoy your dinner, did you? Yes, sir, love. Right, well, uh, I'll be seeing you then. Oh, you can bet on it, love. Ta-ra. Hello, Fred. I was beginning to think you wouldn't make it. I said I would dinner. I told Mrs. Walker there was a job to do on her over, and this is the only time that can fit it in, you know. Well, how, how did you get on? Well, that's it, love. I couldn't get all the Ridley, could I? Every time I try, he's either out of his office or he's at a flipping meeting. You name it. I think he's ducking and diving, that fellow, you know, keeping his head down. Have a damn good mind to go round there and sort him out. Who's he think he is, this flipping Ridley, any road? And that'd make it all right, would it? That'd get us what we wanted. Well, have you got a better idea, love? No. But I did have a thought this morning. Thought? What thought? Well, I may be barking up the wrong tree, but it seems very funny to me that everything was going so well right up to that interview. So? Well, that was when Mr Ridley opened Mrs Walker's reference, wasn't it? Hey, you, lovey. So you still found nothing, then? Nope. Still, I'm not chucking in the towel just yet. Something will turn up. I hope you're right. Heck of a lot of folk out there, you know, would argue the toss over that remark. Yeah. By the way things are going, I'll be one of them soon enough. <laughs> still, I'm living in hope, eh? Yeah. So am I. Eh? I'm hoping if I stand here long enough, you might pay for that drink. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dear. No, I'm sorry. Here, yeah, what is it? Oh, that's it. Twenty, though. All right. Thank you. Yes. yes, what is it? I'm expecting a visitor this afternoon, a Mr Pritchard. So if you're around when he comes, will you show him through? Yeah, and Mr Pritchard is a candidate for Fred's job. Oh, well, if there's a chance of him becoming one of us, I'll definitely be here. <laughs> what time's he coming? Half past four. Oh, you know him, do you? No, I don't. But he comes with the very highest recommendation from Mrs Worsley. Oh, Mrs Worsley? Mrs Francis Worsley. Oh, well, if he's coming with the highest recommendation from her, there must be a bit of something special, eh? Exactly my <laughs> feelings, dear. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, Bert? Uh, I don't want anything, thanks, Bessie. I'm just looking. Oh, no. well, if you see anything you fancy, you, you let us know, won't you? <laughs> don't be like that. Has our Ivy not been in there? I've not seen them. <laughs> well, come to think of it, I've not seen any of the factory crowd. Hey, Bert, I heard they were having a meeting across there today, sir. Oh, right, Tarlow. Uh. Have you managed to get fixed up? Uh, with a job, you mean? Yeah. Short answer, no. How about you? Oh, some hopes. Look, uh, I don't know if it's any interest to you, like, but I've just come out of Sedgwick's cafe and uh, Mrs Sedgwick's there, rushing around like a chicken with no head. Oh, yes, well, I can understand that, her being married to him. Yeah, but she can't get staff. I mean, now that they're working longer hours than that, they've gone on the shift system or something, and uh, she just can't get girls to stick it, so... Well, you know, I just thought I'd mention it, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bert. OK, see ya. I was beginning to think you were lost. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Walker, it uh, took a bit longer than I thought. Everything's all right now, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't sound very sure. There's nothing wrong with the rover, is there? No, 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 no. Oh, very glad to hear it. There's something else? Well, uh, there is something else, Mrs. Walker. I, I just wanted a word about... Uh, <coughs> About the brewery, like, you know. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. There was nothing by the second post either. No, well, uh, that, that weren't what I was going to ask you, Mrs Walker. Oh? No, uh, <clears throat> well, it... Well, it were about the reference you gave me, Mrs Walker. What about it? Well, I mean, I... I well, I was just wondering, like, you know. Surely you don't think that my reference had anything to do with the delay on the part of the brewery, do you? 
Well... I'm surprised at you, Fred. I am surprised that you should even think such a thing. For your information, that reference would have got you a job anywhere in this profession. Anywhere. I do hope you appreciate my position, Mr. Barley. Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I, I can't. Not entirely. I mean, my fiancé was the innocent party in the divorce. Yes, yes, you, you did mention that, but uh, I'm afraid it makes no difference. I can't agree to marry you in my church. But surely there are exceptions. Well, that's true. If a minister feels in all conscience that he wishes to conduct such a ceremony, there is a dispensation for him to do so. But I'm afraid this doesn't apply to me in your case, Mr. Barlow. I'm sorry. I can't do what you ask. I see. Well, uh, sorry I wasted your time. No, you haven't. I assure you I'm always happy to talk to one of my parishioners. And while I can't agree to marry you here, you could always receive a church blessing to your marriage, you know. So, uh, and I assure you, you know, wherever you decide to marry makes not the slightest difference to our pastoral concern for you and your family. So, if I can be of help in uh, any other way, please let me know. Now, if you'll excuse me. Good afternoon. I know who as well. I've got segs on my hands as high as a ten-pence piece. I thought you were coming home at dinner time. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. The meeting did go on a bit. Did you see the vicar? Yes, I did. What did he say? Sorry, no joy. He won't do it. I must say, I did think things would be different now Reverend Hope had gone. Did you tell him I was the innocent party in the divorce? Didn't make any difference. Oh. So, it'll have to be a registry office too now. Oh, no. No, it won't. St. Mary's isn't the only church in Weatherfield, you know. If you want to have a church wedding, you shall have one. I promise you. That's better. Now you look somewhat like. It won't make a scrap of difference, you know. And it won't do any harm either. It's all right if I sit down, is it? Look, Len, I know that pigs like now better than being in their own muck. But I don't think it's asking too much to want my house to be looking somewhat like just for once. This happens to be important to me, you know. I had hoped it were important to you. It is. But they're not going to be expecting Buckingham Palace, are they? I mean, all they'll be looking for is a nice, warm, comfortable home where a kid can grow up and be happy in. You don't think I've overdone it, dear? No, I flipping don't. It looks perfectly OK. Now stop clucking round like a broody hen. There you go. Go on, then. Yeah. Worthington, isn't it? Yeah, come in, come in. It's Mr. Worthington, love. Oh. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Fairclough. How do you do, Mr. Worthington? Well, it's a nice home you have here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing what you can do with these old places, yeah. Do you want to sit down? Yes, thank you. Uh, would you like a cup of tea, Mr. Worthington? Kettle has boiled. Not just at the moment, Mrs. Fairclough, thanks all the same. We do have rather a lot to get through. Perhaps later, though. Oh, right, yeah. No. First of all, I'd like to make it quite clear why I'm here. Well, I thought it was to find out whether we would make suitable foster parents or not. Well, that's certainly the main reason. But I want to make sure that you know what fostering's all about, what it involves, what it means for both yourselves and the child. And also to realise the responsibility you'll be taking on if you do decide to go ahead. But we have decided to go ahead. I'm sure you feel you have, Mrs Fairclough, and I hope you don't change your minds. But we have to be sure, both for the child's sake and for yours. So you won't be able to tell us anything today? No, I'm afraid not. You'll be seeing a bit more of me before we get to that stage. But I thought you people were desperate for foster parents. I mean, you're always advertising for them. <laughs> well, we're short of suitable foster parents, Mr Fairclough. As you probably know, foster children come into the care of the local authority because their natural parents are, for many reasons, unable or unsuitable to look after them. Now, this may be a short-term arrangement or over a longer period. Now, many of these children may be difficult to integrate with a new family of a different background to the one they have known. They may find it difficult to adjust. They may be difficult to handle. So, you see, finding suitable foster parents is not the easiest of tasks, believe me. We have to be sure that when we place a child in a foster home, that he or she stands a fair chance of finding some stability and happiness there. You do understand that? 
Yeah, yeah, well, that's clear to me. Yeah, well, uh, that's why we come to you, because, uh, well, we think we can offer a child like that quite a lot. And that's as good a starting point as any, Mrs Fairclough. Now, I need to know one or two things about you before we look at the formal application form, so I'd like to ask you one or two questions. Now, if there's anything at all that you want to know, please ask me. Look, is Mr Ridley there, or isn't he? Well, look, I don't care what meeting is in, love. If you don't put me through there, straight away to Mr Ridley, I'm going to come round there and sort you lot out, I am. <laughs> I've just about had a belly full of you lot today, I have. Right, I'll hang on then. Oh, <laughs> Mr Ridley? Oh, good afternoon, sir. <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> it's Mr G here, Fred G, Rover's Return. Uh, yeah, remember, well, m my wife and I, we came round for an interview about the possibilities of uh, obtaining licensed premises. Hmm. Yes, well, you would remember, wouldn't you? Only, you see, Mr Ridley, it's about that, uh, it's about that letter I got from you. Uh, yes, well, it is perfectly clear. I mean, I can read. It's just that... Well, now, look here, Mr Ridley, you might have nothing else to add to the matter, but, I mean, I certainly have. I mean, uh, I, I think that, well, I, I think I ought to have some sort of explanation, Mr Ridley. I mean, my wife and I, we were... Well, we were led to believe that some sort of licensed house would become available in the near future and that... Mr Ridley? Mr Ridley? Mr Ridley? Do sit down, Mr Pritchard. Thank you, Mrs Walker. Are you always so punctual? Well, I pride myself in being on time. I always have done. It's no good working in the licensed trade unless you respect time, is it? How right you are. Now, I don't know what you know about this job, if indeed you know anything at all, but it does encompass a little more than the normal duties of a cellar man. Well, perhaps I'd better tell you a bit about myself, then you can see if I fit the bill. What an excellent idea. <laughs> well, uh, I live on my own now. I've got one of those flats over at Shopping Precinct, you know. It's big enough for me now, my daughter's wed. <laughs> She's in Maidstone. She's expecting her first in three months' time. So there isn't a Mrs Pritchard? I'm afraid not, no. She was taken nine years ago. Nine years ago last Tuesday, as a matter of fact. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, it was a relief in a way. She went through a lot, did Maggie, especially toward the end. Hmm. So, what do you do with yourself when you're not working? I'm never idle, Mrs Walker. <laughs> Always like to keep myself busy. You know, little bits about the place and tinkering with my car. So you drive then? Oh, yes. I'd be lost without my little car. <laughs> it's not up to much, but... It gets me about. <laughs> <laughs> and you do have a clean driving licence, I take it? I've had a clean driving licence for 30 years, Mrs Walker. You must forgive me, Alski, but it isn't something you can take for granted in this trade. The drink, you mean? <laughs> There's no danger there, not with me. <laughs> it's a funny thing, you know, all the years I've worked in this trade, I've never had a taste for alcohol. <laughs> oh, I don't mind the odd glass of port at Christmas, you know, but that's about it. Fags is another thing I can't stand. I mean, mind, anybody who had to empty as many ashtrays as I do in a day feel the same, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not talking too much, am I? I know I tend to go on a bit. <laughs> you carry on, Mr Pritchard. I'm only too happy to sit here and listen. <laughs> well, what I'd like you to do now is to take some time to think about what I've said. Talk about it between yourselves. Well, thank you very much for the tea. It's been a pleasure talking to you both. Well, will we see you again? I hope so, Mr. Fairclough. Bye bye, Mrs. Fairclough. Goodbye. Uh, you've got our number. Yes, I think it's. Uh, well, take a pew, love. I'll be with you in a sec. No, it's all right. I just wanted a word with you if you've got a minute. Well, go on. I'm listening. Well, uh, I heard there was a job going spare, didn't I? Oh, you heard right, love. Looking for work, are you? Well, I might be. Well, have you done anything like this before? Well, you could say that, yes. I, uh, I used to work here. Mrs Tanner. Mrs Sedgwick, I presume. Yes, that's right. So you're Elsie Tanner. Yeah, Jim's told me about you. Oh, so I'm wasting my time then, am I? No, of course not, he, uh, he spoke very highly of you. Did he? Oh, till he had that bit of bother with you. Whoo, the air was blue then, I don't mind telling you. <laughs> he, uh, he never did say exactly what the uh, bother was. No, he wouldn't, because he was never told. So you have got a job going spare then? Well, for a suitable applicant, yes, I do. And would you consider me a suitable applicant? 
Well, I mean, that's up to you, love. I mean, you'll find a few changes here. Hours for a start. We open eight in the morning while ten at night now. The girls are on shifts. Well, that's when I can get them to stop long enough. Well, that could be handy. Time off during the day. That's, uh, that's not the only thing you'd have to get used to, though, is it? Oh? Well, I mean, if you do come back, it'll not be as great white chief, will it? I mean, you'll just be another dog's body on dog's body's wages. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sort of job's worth to me, you see. Yes, yes, I know. Well, if you do want to give it a whirl, it's, uh, it's up to you. Could you give me a couple of days to think it over? Well, suit yourself, but uh, don't take too long about it, eh? Come on, flower. You're not in your daddy's yacht now, you know. <coughs> there you are, Terry. Uh, uh, Thanks, love. How long you reckon he's been in there now? Oh, about two minutes longer since the last time you asked. What's up with you, Fred? You're like a cat on hot brick since you got back. It's not wrong with me, is it? I'm only asking. It's a, it's a perfectly normal question, isn't it? I don't know what you're fretting about. Should be me that should be on pins. You? <laughs> I'm the one that's got to work with him if she takes him on, aren't I? I mean, you'll be on your back and away before he sets foot in the place. Hey, just a minute. Hang about. Who says she's taking him on? Nobody did, but I mean, she's not interviewing him for the goodness of her health now, is she? Well, it's a bit hasty, isn't it? I mean, she might just hang on a bit until we, until we know something definite, like. Oh, and be left high and dry because you want to be out here in a couple of weeks. You can't have it always, Fred. Ooh, what a day it's been. It's been like a madhouse uh, in that shop. Honestly, it has. My feet are killing me. It's not exactly been the laugh a minute here, lover. Oh, hello, love. Oh, I didn't know it had got to that time. Yeah, not a minute too soon. <clears throat> How did you go on? Did you tackle her about that reference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well? Oh, it worked that, love. I'd get a job anywhere with that reference. <laughs> if it wasn't that, what was it? Did you talk to Mr Ridley? Yeah, we're like trying to plat sawdust, but I did, yeah, eventually. Well, what did he say? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing? He just said he'd nothing more to add to what he'd already said. That was it, and he hung up on me, didn't he? Put the phone down. What are we going to do, Fred? What are we going to do now? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, love. I'm going to get down there first thing in the morning. I'm going to talk to him face to face, man to man. Nobody makes a couple of tall rugs out of us, love. Nobody. Look, can we go upstairs for a few minutes? We can't talk here. Betty, oh. we're just going upstairs. Can you look after things for ten minutes, love? I should be able to. I've had plenty of practice today, haven't I? Well, thank you for coming, Mr. Pritchard. It's been a pleasure meeting you. And I'll be in touch as soon as I know something definite. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. I shall look forward to that. <laughs> oh, there you are, Fred. I don't think you know Mr. Pritchard, do you? Oh, no, 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 I don't. I don't. Uh, this is Mr. G, whose job you'll be taking. You mean, you mean he's taking my job? Well, not until you've moved to past his new, of course. That's understood. <laughs> That's right. I'll be starting soon as you and your good lady move on. <laughs> good luck in your new post, by the way. Well, uh, I'll be seeing you, Mrs. Walker. You most certainly will. What are we going to do now? There's only one thing you can do. You've got to tell her. I'll have a word with Ridley in the morning, eh? It's I... too late. She's got to be told. You know, although I say it myself, I really am a very good judge of character. The minute that man Pritchard walked in, I knew he was the man for the job. I wonder if I could just have a word with you, Mrs Walker. No. Well, if it's all right, yes. Yes, of course. Come in. What is it, Fred? Don't tell me you've heard from the brewery. Well, uh, <clears throat> yes, we have, actually. Well, come on. Which house have they offered you? Well, that's just it, you see, Mrs Walker. I'm not with you. Unsuitable applicants? You and Eunice? I don't believe it. Neither did we. When did this come? It didn't come this morning. A couple of days ago. A couple of days ago? Why well, didn't you say something at the time? Well, Fred wanted to ring the brewery in case there'd been a mistake. And have you? This afternoon. What did they say? Well, he just said that he'd nothing more to add to what he'd already said in the letter. Who did? Well, it was the man I spoke to, Mr. Mr. Ridley, you know. He, no explanation, he just said, well, that's it, and put the phone down. Did he indeed? Well, he won't hang up on me, I can assure you. You mean he'll have a word with them, Mrs. I Walker? I most certainly will, first thing in the morning. You leave this with me. Only me, flocking on. <clears throat> morning. Sorry. Why, what have you done? You must have come to the wrong house. We don't employ a char here. Ha, ha. This, my man, happens to be my painting outfit. Or, if you prefer it, my outfit for painting in. What? What, what? What is it that you're going to paint? Oh, well, that door for a start. Or that door, if you like. I mean, I'm a compulsive painter, mate. I don't quite know how to put this. Ugh, it's easy. You just open your mouth and waggle your tongue about. Well, do you really think you're up to it? I mean, painting a door on your own, unsupervised? In a word, yes. Well, there's a lot of woodwork. What's that fella called who painted that church ceiling in Rome? Michelangelo. That's right. Well, that's what they said to him. 
Mick, they said there's a lot of seal in there, but look at him. He had a bash, turned out to be a masterpiece. So, you really think there's a chance, dear, that in 400 years' time people will be queuing out to have a look at that dog? You never know. OK, then. But it will have to bear a close examination when you're finished by an expert. And who's that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. All right, have a nice day, look. Oh, well, you don't want to come with me, do you, to see the Vicar of All Saints? Like this? You've got a point. Right. <laughs> I'm just off to work, love. Right. Listen, don't worry. I'm sure it's all a mistake. Mrs. Walker will sort it out. You see if she doesn't. Yeah. See you tonight. Right. Hey, and ring me if you hear anything, won't you? Of course I will, love. Ta, love. Ta. Morning, dear. Just how far are you? Uh, yeah, uh, Mrs. Walker. Yes, dear. If you could get on to them as soon as you can. I hardly slept a wink last night, and Fred didn't either. I'm sure you didn't. Now, rest assured, as soon as it is decently possible, I will ring the brewery and find out what's happened. I do mean find out. Thanks very much, Mrs. Walker. Hi, Eunice, love. Betty. Oh, she seems to have got out of bed the wrong side. Several times during the night, if I'm not mistaken. Well, what's wrong? She's not ill, is she? It's Fred. Promise not to say a word. Oh, Mrs. Walker. The brewery have turned them down. Turned them down? Fred and his wife for a public house. Ah, oh, they can't have. It was all cut and dried, wasn't it? All over by the shouting. Just, well, a matter of a week or two. It days even, wasn't it? That's what I understood, and that is why I'm in the process of getting a replacement for Fred, Mr. Pritchard. Oh, why aren't they? That's what I'm supposed to find out. Well, I mean, didn't they tell him? Didn't they give him a reason? Apparently not. I cannot understand it. Fred was promised a public house, mm. especially when he got himself a wife, and now they refuse the application out of the blue like that. Okay. It's very unusual, mm. not to say mysterious. They must be frantic, the pair of them. I mean, that was the whole idea, wasn't it? You Indeed. know, get wet and get the pub. Careful. Oh. <clears throat> Hi, Fred. How do? Mm. Looks suicidal, don't it? Poor Fred. Are you sure you haven't had it? What would I be doing with your checkbook? Well, it's in joint names. Yes, but do I I put a joint moniker to a check? Yeah, well, it's there if you want to, isn't it? Well, that's good enough for me. But where the hell can it be? I've got to draw some money out if we're going to that flipping holiday tomorrow. And we are, so try upstairs. Inside Blazer Pocket. Why didn't you say so instead of letting me root through that lot? I'm not saying it is, it's just an idea. Hey, before you go, come here. What? This application form for fostering. What? What about it? They want details of previous marriages, divorces and separations. Why? Well, I don't know. I suppose if you've been divorced five times, you're a bit suspect as a human being, let alone a foster parent. Well, I've been divorced once. That's about par for the course now, isn't it? Mm. You've nothing to worry about? No, except... Except what? Well, they want details of, uh, you know, if we've done any previous fostering. Well, we haven't, have we? Well, what about Terry? Oh, no, you didn't foster him, did you? I mean, you were living with his dad for a while. But he was only living with us in this house for, what, a couple of days. Mm. And you didn't get on with him very well even for that short time, did you? That had nothing to do with the lad himself, and you know it hadn't. Mm. Right, so what do I put? No previous experience, which we haven't had. Can I go now? Mm. Do you know, they give you half a page for one question. Why do you want to be foster parents? Well, that should be easy enough. Just write down everything you've been saying to me over the past few weeks. You'll need a hell of a lot more paper, though. Oh, oh plus Who is it? It's us. Oh, um, I'm gone. Oh, sorry, I'd have come the back way if I'd known. Oh, it's quite obvious what you're doing. Is it? Painting the fourth bridge at the Emily. very least. Sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, it's very nice. It is not very nice. As you know, it's a flipping mess, isn't it? Oh, it's not too bad. The truth, Emily. It's a mess. Streaky. Yes. Like it's been crying. Yes. No need to be too flipping honest. I can't seem to get rid of the brush strokes. Well, let me see how you're doing it. Oh, no, it's all wrong, I'm afraid. Well, what's wrong about it? Well, the sequence is up and down, then diagonally, and then across. How do you know? Well, I've watched Ernest's painting. He was very good, an artist, you might say. Was he? Oh, 
Oh, blast. Well, I'm obviously not an artist. Have you got too much paint on your brush? How do I know how much is too much? Well, Ernest used to say you should paint from the wrist. I mean, you seem to be using your entire arm. I'm sorry, Emily, but to say you've never done any painting yourself, you seem to be a very big authority on it. You did ask me. Hmm. Oh, God, my wrist. Oh, Ken is going to be laughing like a drain when he sees this lot. He's going to be pretty amused when he sees you. Oh, God, I suppose I do look a bit of a mess, don't I? And the idea was to look glamorous and yet casual at the same time. <laughs> oh, never mind. Let's have a cup of coffee. Well, I don't think you should start once you've started. Not till you've finished or you'll be able to see the join. I could be hours. Well, I know. I'll make the coffee and sort of hold it to your lips while you work. You are taking the mickey now. Never mind, Ken. Oh, flipping heck, my whole body's getting tired right down to my feet. Now, my dear, are you sure you've made it clear who it is who's calling? I mean, board meetings aren't like communion services. They can be interrupted. You have been telling me he will be free in five minutes for the last hour. That's uh, 84, Bert, huh? Right, I'll get these. Oh, no, Bert, let me get them. No, me I'll get them. Look, we're both in the same boat. We're both on the dole. They are. Thanks, Fred. Cheers. Oh, still no joy, I'm afraid. Fred is still at that board meeting. I bet there's no mention of me and Eunice at that board meeting, Mrs. Walker. They're not important enough. No, I don't get better. Well, how would you feel, Mrs. Walker, if somebody came in out of the blue and just, well, shattered your life without any explanation? Now, wouldn't you feel bitter? <laughs> Any luck? No, I'm beginning to feel quite nervous about bringing the brewery. You see, it's so unlike Newton and Ridley. They're usually such sympathetic, generous employers. Hmm. How are you two today? Oh, just ticking over, Betty, my love. Still, I mustn't grumble, you know. This weather does have its compensations. Mm. I mean, uh, like uh, I'm getting a tan while I'm whitewashing that backyard, haven't you noticed? Well, your nose is a bit red, yeah. Red? It's brown, is that? That's <laughs> rubbish. Listen, all handsome men are slightly sunburned. Oh! Yeah, oh, you know what they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hey, Especially watch. when you're looking through a mirror. Just be careful. <laughs> You've not fixed anything yet, lovey. Well, I'm keeping the fingers crossed, love. Oh? Yes, the assistant sales at Futura Fashions is leaving to marry a Frenchman. Oh, mm, looking for some. Yeah, well, I'm hoping her job's going spare. I'm going to see the boss sometime this afternoon. Well, you've had plenty of experience with that sort of job, love. Aye, ma'am, in modes and all that. Mm. You know, in my heyday, I could rent to sell a sheath dress to a size 42. Not to me, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there were good days then. Though I didn't think so at the time. Come and complain that, love. Well, I hope you get it, love. Because between you and me, I'd rather be factory pale and dull brown any day of the week. Uh, and the sun brings me out in a rash. <laughs> you know, if I don't get this job, I bet you I should have to think what the alternative would be. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Walker will have answered that, love. And then... Like a bolt from the blue, they get this letter from the brewery saying that they can't have a public house after all. Well, as you can imagine, they're terribly upset and puzzled. So, Douglas, if you could do anything to throw light on the mystery, I really would be tremendously grateful. Ho, oh, ho! Bet you say that to all the landladies. <laughs> yes, of course I'll hold on. Yes. What sort of bad news? Yes, yes, I knew that vaguely. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know what to say. Are you sure that your personnel department are sure of their facts? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Don't know what to say to you, let alone them. No, I'm all right, thank you. Yes. Yes, all right, we must meet sometime. Like a title from a song. Well, a line from one, anyway. 
So you busy whitewashing? Four marks for observation. Actually, uh, I've been busy painting. Really? I'll tell you what, I'll swap jobs. Yeah, I'll probably make as big a mess of that. What is it you're exactly painting, love? Well, I've been trying to paint the living room door. And? And it looks as if about four people have been having a go at it. And uh, just watching the professional way you handle a brush. Do you know something? Flattery will get you everywhere. Well, I was just wondering if you could come and have a look at it, tell me where I'm going wrong. Are you joking? I mean, what will folks say seeing me nipping in your back door? I don't care. Do you know what? I don't think I do either. I'll be there in a jiffy, all right? right. <laughs> what do you think, Tracy? Oh, thanks very much. Right, where is this post-impressionistic study in neo-symbolism, then? You what? Oh, it's something I read somewhere. I still don't know what it means, oh. mind you. Aha, uh -huh, yes, hey. It's very hard to achieve, is that? Especially with your modern paints. How do you mean? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to make such a mess of it. Do you know what? I think it's the different thicknesses I like best. Hey, what happened to you? Did you faint or something or did a fly walk over it? Bert, if I wanted a comedian, I'd have given Ken Dodd a ring. Don't show him that door. He'll build his act round it. Sorry. Oh, it's not that. It's just that I, I could live with it, but I'm not sure Ken could. So, well, if you could do a quick repair job on it, say, by tea time. I, I mean, I pay you and you'd probably be saving a marriage. Yeah, well, uh, it's wet enough, that's for certain. Yeah, I reckon I could do something with it. And will you do it? Yeah, of course I will. Oh, Bert, you're a lovely fellow. Hey, get off! You'll have me covered in paint and all. <laughs> what would Ivy say, then? Oh, well, you never know. It might just keep her on her toes. Bert Tilsley. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Mrs Walker, Betty. Oh, come in. I thought you were still on the phone, you see. <laughs> What's wrong, Mrs Walker? Where's Fred? He's in the bar. Is he busy? Well, he's steady. I mean, the rush is over now. Sit down, Elizabeth. I spoke to the brewery. Yes, I thought you'd answer the phone. To Mr Cresswell himself. Oh, Mr Cresswell. Well, could he help? Did he say why they'd turned down Eunice and Fred? Yes, he did tell me why. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Why did they? Well, apparently some years ago, mm. Eunice worked at the Foundryman's Arms. Oh, yes, she did. Yes, Fred told me. I think I knew it, too. <laughs> Anyhow, while she was there, there was an incident. Usual thing, sticky fingers in the till. Eunice? Eunice and another barmaid. They were both dismissed. Eunice? Well, I can't believe it either. No, I don't believe it. Yes, but the point is the brewery does believe it. They still have the manager's report in their files, like an accusing finger. So because of her? They can't employ Fred. Oh, Everything all right, Mrs Walker? Only with you leaving the bar and Betty Scarper in, I just wondered, um, like... Uh, uh, yes, Fred, I've had a, a migraine, rather more serious than usual, I'm afraid. You won't have spoken to Mr Creswell yet, then? Uh, no. No, and I haven't been up to it, but uh, I will ring later, I promise. Oh. Oh, I'll get back then. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Thank you. I couldn't tell him, I couldn't tell him. Well, look, he'll have to know. Oh, she will. Everything they've been looking forward to, planning for, gone. I know. Can I have a cup of tea, please? Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, love. Oh, it's all right. I'll serve myself if you want. Oh, it's you. Do you, uh, do you want a cup of tea? Please. Oh, so this is uh, just a social call, is it? No, not really. Oh. Is that uh, job still going to be? Well, it is and it isn't. You see her there? She just asked me if she can start. Come off it. True as I'm standing here. Well, just tell her she can't. I'm starting. And the money I said? I think it's worth a couple of quid more. Oh, I don't. Do you know, I don't think she'd argue much either. All right. Yeah, are you sure you want this job, Elsie? I mean, you're not exactly bubbling over with enthusiasm, are you? Well, you don't expect me to be, surely. I mean, I worked here as boss and now I'm coming back as... Well, certainly not gaffer. That is exactly my point. Look, I'll do the work and better than most and that's all you can expect. 
Now, how much is tea? I've forgotten. Oh, I think I can manage the price of a cup of tea, Elsie. Seeing as you'll be starting tonight. Tonight? Oh, you do believe in getting your money's worth, don't you? But you'll find I'm fair. Honestly, Rita, there's no need. I'm perfectly willing to give you a reference. I can't think of anybody better to foster a child. Well, all the same, I'd still like you to read what I've written. Well, how old a child are you thinking of, or are you not bothered? No, not really. I think Leonard liked one of about 12 or 13. Preferably a boy and one interested in football and cricket. <laughs> like father, like son. Well, I think Leonard would be good with a lad like that. And very good for him. Yeah. Well, will you read this? This is in answer to why we want to be foster parents. Well, <laughs> could you read it? I've had to get glasses for reading and I haven't got them with me. <laughs> I think I need reading glasses as well. Hello. Oh, hi, Hello. just in time. Hello. Listen to this, Lem. What? We want to be foster parents because we want to look after a child. We have no children of our own, so we have plenty of time and opportunity to look after a child. We are also financially able to look after a child. The reason we have no children is we got married rather late in life. To tell the truth, we really wanted to adopt, but again, our age was against us. We both like children and usually get on well with them. I personally have older boys and girls working for me at the news agents and I find we get on very well together. My husband has also had apprentices, though at the moment he has not got one. So you see, both of us have had a lot of experience of older children. But as we have said, the main reason we want to foster is that we would just like a child in the house. It's only a small terraced house, but it is comfortable and clean. We are certain we could make a child, especially one perhaps from an unhappy home himself, very happy and contented. We would definitely try very hard to do just that, and a happy child in our house would make us very happy as well. What do you think? Oh, splendid, Rita. Yeah, Len? That's great, that, though. <sighs> do you know how long it took me to write that? Two hours. <laughs> like writing a composition. <laughs> Now, are you sure I've got all the paint off my face? Yes. Perhaps I should have left one or two spots on just to show him how hard I've been working. Home from the sailor, home from the sea. Oh, you are in here, then. Uh, are we, Tracy? Yes, I think we are. <laughs> hey, get this. You like it? It's perfect. A professional job, no less. You take back everything you said about my powers with a paintbrush. Absolutely. I haven't even got a fly stuck on it anywhere. Is it your mummy, a clever girl, painting this door? Uncle Bert did it. Tracy! I see. Out of the mouths of babes comes the truth, which Tr is... Us women are supposed to stick together, you know. I'm waiting. Well, I made a right botch of it, so Bert helped me out for the price of a pint. There you are. I've confessed. Do oh. your worst. Well, I'm the like of that. Why don't you ten, tell you my news, is that? What news? Oh, the vicar. Did you see him? What did he say? Well, I mean, does it matter? if? Uh, how can I possibly marry a woman who's obviously a dissembler? If she's going to lie about a painting, what's she going to say about the housekeeping? Or who she's hiding in the wardrobe? Ken, what did he say? I mean, do vicars marry people without moral scruples, I ask myself? Does anybody... I'll kill you, Ken Barlow. Yes, he will. July the 27th. That's two days before... Uh, no, theirs is two days after ours. Oh, <laughs> Hey, just a minute, you've got a bit of paint on your nose. How do you manage to do that if you haven't been painted? Just sure up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, love. You didn't ring me. Well, there was no to ring you about, was there? Hasn't she been on to them, Mrs Walker? No, she's ill, isn't she? Had one of her migraines. Oh, we can't go on like this. I know we can't, love. Listen, I'm going to go down to that brewery first thing in the morning. I'm going to demand an explanation. Nobody plays silly bees with our lives. Are you sure she's <clears throat> ill? That's what she said, love. I would have thought she could have managed a flipping phone call. Oh, you're up, Mrs. Walker. Oh, dear. I thought, um, well, you haven't been feeling so well, have you? No, dear, but I had a little rest in the chair, so I'm feeling better now. Oh, good. You didn't manage to ring the brewery, then? Well, not to worry. Fred's going down first thing in the morning, and he'll not leave without a satisfactory answer, that's for sure. Eunice? Yes? Could you close the door, dear? 
What's the matter? I felt I had to tell you first because it mainly concerns you. Tell me what? Well, I haven't been feeling well. I had a slight migraine, but I have been making more of it than deserved. Why? To avoid Fred. But why? Oh, come on, Mrs Walker, please. I did speak to the brewery. I did speak to Mr Cresswell. What did he say? He told me why you'd been refused the tenancy. Well, why have we? Well, dear, it seems that years ago you worked at the Foundryman's Arms and while you were there there was a scandal about missing money. I'm afraid the brewery have a very long memory. I'd like to sit down. Oh, pardon? I said we'd like to sit down. And that's why we didn't get it? I'm afraid so. I'd forgotten about it. All them years ago. I was innocent, Mrs Walker, as true as I'm standing here. I never took that money, never in a million years. I'm no thief. What's Fred going to say? I have to be told first. Certainly before tomorrow morning. Through me, he's lost everything. Through me. Oh, oh, yes, why not? Before the rush starts. If there is any. Mm, there, but for the grace of God. Do you mind? I was just trying to cheer you up. Oh, is that what you were doing? Oh, there's a story there, if we only knew. Aye, and it's certainly not Barbara Cartland. <laughs> well, at least she's eating. She's not stuck under the viaduct somewhere, swigging a bottle of meth, is she? Next stop, like as not. Ooh, we know nothing, do we? Nothing, thank God. After you, Zulch, yes. Countess of Weatherfield, that fallen on hard times. <laughs> you know the aristocracy. Right. Hey, I don't want you treating that like one of your dust carts. Madam, seeing as you've already rigged this machine not to pay out, don't blame me if I talk stern to it and give it a backhander. Cheeky monkey. Yeah, you'll never stop them. Besides, if they're going to do violence, I'd rather they did it to a fruit machine than wallop some old lady in the street. Mm. Oh, will you look at that? It's two melons up, there's a third one just coming, and then it flicks over to a flaming strawberry. <laughs> well, I've got this button under me foot. Don't think I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know, I've been <coughs> racking my brain to try and remember where I've seen you before, years ago. Oh, I've been around a lot round here. Laundry. Oh, I don't think so. Floris? Gown shop. I worked for a long time in Miami Modes. Oh, that's it, Miami Modes. Oh, that takes me back a bit. I was only a kid at the time. Yes, well, you would be, wouldn't you? Junior clerk I was at Mayhew's. That solicitor's on Berry Road. Oh, it seems like yesterday. On Team Petticoats and a Pony's Tale. <laughs> oh, me, you had a thing going with some woman that worked at your place. I, I used to carry messages. Now, what the heck was her name? Mrs... D Mrs. Dumbarton. D don't mention that name to me. It's like a red rag to a bull. <laughs> she used to be our supervisor. Oh, it's a small world, isn't it? Aye. Uh, hey, the crafty devil. We always knew there was something going on. Well, what isn't going on these days? Aye, well, what's more to the point, Bert? Have you got something going on? Oh, well, I have had for the last couple of days. No, as a matter of fact, I've just been decorating at number one for newlyweds. Should be finishing a couple of hours, though. Aye, well, it's better than nothing, isn't it? <laughs> Anything's better than nothing, love. Right, well, I'll have a cup of tea, please. <coughs> She's rigged that machine, you know. Uh, can I have egg, sausage and bacon, please? You see? As soon as you take your flaming foot off that button... What exactly is the sunbed? Well, you know them grills what cook both sides at once? Mm. It's a bit like one of them. You lie on all these lights, and then there's another load of lights on top of you, and you just tan delicately back and front. Really? Yeah. It's handy enough. It's a bit like going to Costa del Sol on a 23 bus. They've got palm trees and that. It's a bit tatty, but they do the best. You know, you want to try it sometime to do you good. Mm, as long as you're careful. Oh, aye, you've got to be careful. Mm. Betty was saying uh, Fred's having a bit of bother. Was she? No, she didn't tell me the old story. She left a load of gaps. Hmm. Well, gaps could be dangerous, cos you could put them in with complete fiction, couldn't you? I can't see why you shouldn't know the truth. There's no reason why you shouldn't suffer with the rest of us. Blimey, is it as bad as that? It's just about as bad as it could be. 
Eunice used to work at the foundrymans, and she and another barmaid were sacked because thirty pounds was missing from the till. Eunice. Mm -hmm. She protests her innocence, of course, but the brewery has it on record. And they won't have her back. No. So if they won't have her, they won't have Fred. That's about the size of it. Poor devil. He's built his flame in life for him going um, out the pub. So if I have urgent need for a sunbed, you know the very place. I will personally introduce you. Hi. Hello, Eunice. Hello. Talk to her, will you, Mrs. Walker? She's had a lousy night and she's had no breakfast. I think she's sickening for summit. Tell her to take the rest of the day off, Mrs. Walker. She'll listen to you. Oh, dear, I am sorry. Very well, I'll see what I can do. You going to tend to the cellar? Now, you listen. Cakey, you haven't told him, then. It's not the easiest thing in the world, Mrs. Walker. No, but it'll be harder if he goes to the brewery, which he intends to do. My dear, it is much better to hear bad news from somebody you care for. And, you know, you could put your own case, which the brewery won't do. Come on, Ken, you love it dark. Now, don't rush me. Choosing food for any household that contains Uncle Albert is an agonising process at the best of times. Don't make it worse. Hey, does he like fish? Well, he doesn't actually like anything. He'll put up with fish. Yeah, well, there's some very nice pieces of cod in there in a prawn sauce. They're very tasty. He'll like them. <laughs> well, you know, anything with a sauce already in it is foreign muck. <laughs> Do it yourself. Shake it out of a bottle after the event. That's OK. I'm not sure he's not right, actually. Anyway, I'll take these. Oh. And you'll grumble? But what's new about that? All ready for the big day, are we? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Let me know if you need a bridesmaid. <laughs> You'll have to fight Tracy. I better will I. No, I think I've got everything I need. A bride, a parson, a reception, lens viewing best man. Oh, good. So we don't want to tempt Providence, do we? No, no. Fine. So long. Ah, oh, is that Ken? Yeah. And do you want me? He didn't want either of us, love. Eh? Look, shove that in there. I'm going to be here all day. Yeah, I know. Well, what's up with her? Is she working? Yeah, no, oh, they're in town shopping, the pair of them. But generally, if Gail's out, they get someone to eat at my mum's. Keep that line to touch, haven't they? I'm going to have to put a stop to this. All right, we'll feed you. What do you want? Um, sausage, bacon, egg and chips. I see. Just a light snack, eh? Well, I'm a growing lad, aren't I? Yeah, well, you better stop before you go bankrupt. How many sausage? Uh, three. Three? How's the other one? The other what? The other growing lad, my godson. Oh, him, he's a little devil. He's like Colnick, only smaller. <laughs> sure up, he's a lovely little lad. Of course he is. I mean, look at his dad. <laughs> hey, Elsie. Yeah? You know, I get embarrassed that easy, like, and, well, you all must be one of the family. Do I leave you a tip? You most certainly do. <laughs> a family-sized one. <laughs> Bake your sausage, egg and chips, please. Three sausage. Mm. Right, that's it. Well, it looks like it up to now, doesn't it? Well, I'll let it slacken off a bit, then I must go out and do a bit of shopping. You know, I've got hardly any food left in the house. He goes mad if he doesn't get three square meals a day. Why don't you bring him round here? Oh, he wouldn't eat here. No, I don't blame him. Not because of the food, cheeky. No, it's a rule of it. If you own somewhere, keep out of the way. That way you can't get any complaints. No, so he lets his wife deal with him instead, eh? Well, if you can't look after your husband, who can you look after? Yourself. <laughs> so it's all right, then, is it, if I do a bit of shopping? I used to be manager S here, you know. Oh, I've got a Julia, haven't I? Is that easy? <laughs> Rubbish. Look, these club owners that run fruit machines, they're governed by law, aren't they? I mean, like, a Presbyterian club, well, they're only allowed to pay out a fiver, like. And then a Catholic club, well, they can pay out a bit more, like a tenner, that sort of thing, you know. Give up, H, you're talking a load of rubbish. Look, if the law changes and they can pay out more, what do they do? They get a little fella from round the corner with a screwdriver and fix it, don't they? What I'm saying is, if they can fix it to pay out more, they can fix it to pay out nothing, can't they? Give over, they will last five minutes. No. Oh. Oh, hello, love. I'm coming through. Oh, Fred, um, could I have a quiet word with you now, please? Oh. It's quite all right. Hey, come on, Chuck, cheer up. It's not the end of the world, you know. Uh, let's go through to the living room, shall we? Fred! Lager's off! 
Hang on. Your timing is impeccable. Eh? No, no, not yet. Not for a couple of hours. It's still tacky Sorry. with that. Hey, isn't it nice, Ken? Yeah. It's almost as good as I could have done. Oh, well, obviously, it's not as good as that. I mean, he was going to do it himself, you know, Bert, but he's so busy. Hey, yeah. knock it off, mm -hmm. you. And yes, I am busy. <laughs> it's not easy getting married, is it, Ken? Oh, you can say that again. I think they make it difficult on purpose. If you stay the course, you mean it. Oh, he <laughs> does love me, even if he hasn't bought me a ring. We're going now, woman. Will you be told? <laughs> Do you know what? I thought you'd have got married the same day as Prince Charles, because it's easy to remember, isn't it? Yes, we're not so easy to organise, apparently. According to our vicar, the world and his wife want to get married on that day. <laughs> what? Yes, it's exactly what I thought. <laughs> anyway, oh. thank, thank you very much. Right, um, thanks, Ken. Uh, thanks very much. Well, uh, I'll see you. Thanks again, Bert. Yeah, cheers. Ta Cheer about. What did you give him? 30. Think it's enough? Yeah. Too much? No, just about right, I'd say. Yeah. And I'd rather give it to him. Well, that's what I thought. Hey, what did you say to Alf earlier on? Oh, nothing very much. Oh, he said we could have him as a bridesmaid. <laughs> did you, uh, did you tell him that we were having Len as best man? Well, I might have done, yeah, why? Because he's disappointed it's not him, that's why. Well, you didn't convey that impression to me. That's because you're insensitive. I am not insensitive. This time you are, love. He's disappointed, and I'm sorry, because I like Alf. Oh, well, so do I. I like a lot of people. But you can't please everybody in this world, you know. So get your priorities right. Where's my dinner? Sit down a minute, Fred. Well, what's up? Fred, do you love me? Well, of course I do. What's up? I mean, you do love me. You really love me. Come on, love. Mrs. Walker, the brewery told her why we didn't... why they wouldn't give us a pub. And? Remember I told you I used to work behind the bar at the Foundry Man's? I did tell you that, didn't I? Yeah, go on. Well, there was some money missing. It wasn't me, I swear to God it wasn't me. I had nothing to do with it, but they, they couldn't find out for sure. So they sacked us both, me and the girl who took the money. Money missing? You got the sack? It wasn't me, Fred. Now she tells me. Huh. You want my passport, won't you? I needed a wife to get a pub. I could, I could have married any woman in the world. Yes, you could, Fred, if that's all you'd wanted her for. <laughs> what a laugh, eh? What a bloody laugh. wrong, Mrs. Walker? Yes, I think I do. I just couldn't listen to her, Mrs. Walker. I can't listen to her. It's got to be talked out, Fred. It has got to be talked out. Now go. I'm sorry, love. Just got under my belt, did it? Couldn't believe it. Neither could I. It was five or six years ago, Fred. They wanted to bring the police in, but... but they sacked us instead. I wanted to go to the police, but I never had the chance. Smart, is not. I bet they've never done out wrong. I did nothing wrong, Fred. I know you didn't, love. I know you didn't, but... Why didn't you tell me before we went, you know? I, I, I didn't think. I tried to put it out of my mind. You, you know how you do. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, oh, don't worry, Fred. Something else will turn up. No. No, you didn't do it, Eunice. And that brewery's going to have to change their mind, aren't they? If they don't change their mind, I'm going to change it for them. No, no, as long as you believe me, that, that's all I want. Oh, but it's not what I want, is it? Oh, no. Not by a long chalk, it isn't. Ah, uh, oh, oopsie. <laughs> Oh, who's the lovely big boy? Oh, you'd say that if you had to dump him around. And he squawks his head off if he's left in that thing too Well, long. he's alive, isn't he? You want your mummy's arms around you, don't you? Eh? Hey? <laughs> Aye, you've been shopping. Oh, my husband's been in, has he? Yeah, only for his dinner. Oh, a bone idol, aren't they? I left him a frying pan full of stuff at home. Ah, yeah, well, ours is bigger, you see. Yeah, hang on a minute. Your mummy used to work here before you arrived, didn't you, love? There were three of us, I know. What are you doing on your own? Oh, madam's gone out shopping. She's been gone for the last two hours. Do you want a hand? It would be a good idea. Save me legs and all. Here, take this to Bluto over there. Bluto? Yeah, <laughs> Bluto. Popeye's mate. Here, the big fella. <laughs> Bluto? Yes. Oh, train's late back from Liverpool. I take it that's where you've been. Well, you did used to run this place, didn't you? I left it in good hands. Yeah, that is definitely a girl's best friend, that is. It had better be. Oh, not another one. Do you want that pouring all over your head, Langton? Go on, let's have a look. It's not bad. I've won one three times, that's that. I tried, I tried. First thing you put in your bottom drawer, that. That's your true so. Shut up, Ignan. I'm talking about after the wedding. When it becomes the divorce drawer. All your little bits of jewellery. Couple of quid a week you managed to save out the housekeeping. So you won't be left empty-handed when he walks out on it. <laughs> really bad. It's the world we live in, Mrs Walker. Oh, yes. Very nice, dear. Very tasteful. I know. Uh, right then. What's everyone of it? Don't be daft. Uh, pint for bourbon. Oh, well, I'll, I'll get you one after. I'll tell you what, we'll suck this and then uh, I'll come round and give you a hand putting the furniture back. I can manage. No, you can't. In the road, I've got nothing else to do, have I? I wondered if I could have a word, Mrs. Walker. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, seemingly, Eunice did know Mrs. Walker, and I just wondered, well, if you could have a word with your friends at the brewery. Uh, well, I know they think very highly of you then. I really don't think that would be a very good idea, Fred. If it had happened here, yes. But it happened somewhere else. I really have no right to interfere. That would be just a thought, like. I couldn't intervene with the brother better, really couldn't. It's hard luck if she did now, though. Yes. We only have her word for it, don't we? Yeah. Hiya. You've taken your time, haven't you? Where have you been till now? We've been for the ring. Oh, of course you have, I. Do you like it? Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Hey, I'm sorry, love. Just had a bit of a rush on. Listen, Alf, um, I'm not quite sure how to ask you this, because it's a pretty big thing to ask anybody, but, uh... Well, you know I haven't got a father, don't you? Yeah. I just wondered if you'd mind giving me away. Me? Do you mean stand in for him? You know, be my father for the day, like. There's nobody I'd rather have. Oh, love. Do you know, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what... There's nothing I'd like... There's nothing I'd like more in this world. You'll do it, then? Come here. <laughs> oh. Hey, give all. Both have been out left to give. <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, Mr Ridley, the matter's not closed. I mean, fair's fair, Mr Ridley. I mean, it were all cut and dried until we got that letter from you, weren't it? And, well, I, I just think we ought to have a, a full explanation. Right. Right, I'll be there. Goodbye. Who's that you were talking to? Who do you think? Fred, I told you not to. I don't want it all raking up again. Raking up? It's all raked up. They've done the raking up. All I'm trying to do is put it right. Can't you see? I just want to forget it. I'm sick of it. I was sick of it then and I'm sick of it now. Please, Fred, for my sake. Please. Fred. Can we have your body in there? It's all right. We'll manage. I'll do this flaming machine. Hey, I'm watching you. Any more of that game and you're barred. Listen, it's one of the cardinal rules of gambling, that is. Always give the punter a chance to get his money back. I mean, it works in the West End gambling clubs, it works in Monte Carlo, it even works in Las Vegas. Why can't it work here? Ah, well, they don't give you black puddings like we do, do they? Where do you think 
are you going? Well, I've got to get him his tea, love. He's been to Burnley. Look, half an hour in the evening shift will be on. You manage. You're experienced. You said so. I never said I was an experienced cart horse. Oh, go on. You look nothing like a cart horse, does she, Eddie? And you're slack, anyhow. Oh, well, uh, you'll not be lonely. <laughs> there we are. Not bad if I do say it myself. Ever made a man suit? No, I haven't, and I don't intend to start now. Come on, love it. Let's get that off you before we get it all covered in crayon. There we are. Oh, another milestone passed, eh? There. Now then, you go and get your shorts and T-shirt on again. Whoops. That's I wonder... Go on, lovely, run there. Come over here, Trace. Put these on. Let's go. I wonder if I should ask Susan to be a bridesmaid as well. <laughs> well... <laughs> You certainly wouldn't take the limelight off this one. No, you're right, actually. I'm not sure even I will. Yeah, OK, then why not? Do you hear that, Tracy? Cousin Susan's going to be a bridesmaid with you. you like that, won't you? Yes. Yes, yeah, she likes her cousin Susan. Hey, she won't be a cousin once we get married, will she? What will she be? Er, uh, stepsister. Stepsister. Hey, and what about if anything happens between you and me and we get a little brother for that one? <laughs> hey. It's not impossible. Oh, I should hope not. Well? Uh, well, he'd be a half-brother, wouldn't he? Mm. Not sure I like it. I think we'll stick to brother and sister. Hey, I wonder how they go on at these parties in Hollywood. Hello, how was your dad? Oh, which one? <laughs> We're not that complicated. I don't feel complicated at all. How do you feel? Happy. I was looking for another word, but why bother? That one's fine. An admirable sentiment. <laughs> well, where's the youngster then? You've not got him strapped to your back, have you? <laughs> His grandma's. Eating chips like as not. Well. <laughs> I always in bed. She never puts him to bed. And when she does, she runs up and down the stairs in case he wakes up again. <laughs> It'll do him no harm. Born into the noisiest family in Clayton, I was. I didn't get a wink of sleep until I was five years old and look at me. All right, suit yourselves. <laughs> Do you know what? He's still sat on her knee. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> and what you haven't done? Oh, well, I'll have half a bitter if you flush. Half a bitter for the old man, please, bet. Hey, uh, which pictures are you going to? Uh, the Empress. You're going to the Roxy. <laughs> Where's the missing member? Looking after Nicholas. Oh, I'm sure she'd rather. I hear you've been looking after Kenneth Harder, both ready for the big day. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be, I. You know, I'm surprised with the day being so near that they didn't plan for the actual date of the royal wedding. Ah, oh, well, it's not easy, apparently. You see, this vicar that they've got, he says that the world and his wife want to get married on that day. Mm, I suppose it's understandable. <laughs> she didn't get it. Excuse me, this is Walker. Yes. It spoke on the telephone, Mr. Dodd. Mr. Dance, the decorator. I've come round to bring me gear and to say I'll be starting tomorrow. Oh, of course, the decorator. It's been so long. Aye, well, I did say it could be quite a while, if you remember. I iterated that on a number of occasions. Yes, you did, but it's still very short notice. Ah, well, I've got to pick my weather suit. I've been doing outsides, but with the forecast being unsettled for the next few days, I said to myself, this is a good time to move indoors. Well, it's like your portrait painter and your landscape artist. Your portrait painter can work all levels. You can't paint a watercolour of the cornfield in pouring rain, though, can you? You see what I mean? And with this depression being over Iceland... Yes, yes, sir. And what are you here for now? Well, I've got my gear outside. I thought if I left it, I'd be ready for an early start. Right. Well, I'll open the side door in Rosamond Street. Right. <laughs> Tomorrow, I ask you... Now then, there's only a rig get Rembrandt to paper at stairs and landing. <laughs> Cheer up, Fred. There's worse things happen at sea. You heard about it, did you? Enough. I'll sort that flipping brewery out if it's the last thing I do, I will. Hey, I thought Eunice didn't want you to. Well, she's her own worst enemy here, isn't she? She did now, and it's got to be put right. It's for her sake I'm doing it, and I am doing it. Oh, yeah, by God, I'm doing it all right. Street fans don't despair. The story continues tomorrow at the same time. After the break, there's more drama in Emmerdale.